Fourth day of competition for this 2024 Black Moors Australian Adaptive Pro. This is Ben Way, joined in the booth by Charles Chaka Webb. And we are getting started a little bit late today. We had a little skull come in, a little uh, storm front blew in, but we have some amazing surface you can see live on screen. And that wind has turned pretty much direct offshore, buttering out the conditions. And it looks like Gallo having a paddle there, taking a look. We've just started our first heat of the day, and this is a new division that none of you have seen. None of us have seen yet in the competition. This is the blind no vision. So previously we had the blind low vision division surf their first heat, and they have a, a range of, I think, up to about 10%, 15% of vision for the best. In this, there's absolutely no vision. Yeah. So these guys are surfing in the dark. And imagine that. The, the wind is about, I don't know, 20, 30 mile an hour straight offshore. It's bowling. Uh, most of the waves are very hollow, dropping top to bottom. So we have seen some of the free surfers catch a bunch of great waves before the heat. And now we have uh, the opportunity for these guys to probably catch a wave of their life if they get on the right one. So this the, the conditions have changed day to day, but the surf has been good all the way through. Yeah, it looks like we've had an opening ride by Kirk Watson. We'll give him that information. White's first wave, 2.33. First wave of white, 2.33. Time called, 22 minutes and 20 seconds. Want to just thank our sponsors, Blackmores, for sponsoring, being the title sponsor of the Australian Open Pro Adaptive Surfing Championships, excuse me, the Pro Championships. And uh, we want to thank Visit Oceanside as well for sponsoring the AASP Tour. This is your first stop on the Adaptive Surfing Professional World Championship Tour. Our next stop is in Hawaii in May. Then we go to Costa Rica in June and back to the US Open in September. So we'll be bouncing around, Ben. Yeah, this is very cool to show the, uh, the spectacle of adaptive competitive surfing all around the corners. I've seen from all of the Aussie competitors, they've really kind of put it out there that it, when they do get their visas and they are able to travel, you know, we're going to get a lot more top competitors. The divisions are going to change. The seating's going to change because we've got some guys that have just come out of nowhere and, and uh, putting, putting the world on notice right now. Free surfer on the inside, just outside of the jet ski and in the midsection. Red up and riding. Ator, your current ASP world champion, down the line. Look at Ator cutting back. Staying in the cot pocket right here where it's got a little bit of power and just kind of bounced off of that one. But Ator, imagine, this guy's got zero vision, bro. He's dropping in on the bomb. He's doing turns. He's doing cutbacks. He's claiming that one right there. So Ator will get a first, uh, first score on the board. He is the current champ. He made all the stops last year, traveled the world, and uh, claimed his title. And this is his to for somebody to wrestle away from him, he looks like he's not giving it up with a 5.33. Yeah, and the only reason he left his uh, spotter hanging right there is he could not see his hand out on the wave right there. And uh, I think that was less of a claim and more of kind of trying to wave, oh, gotcha. wave his spotter down to find him. Yep, I got gotcha. you. But uh, we have an opening score. I'll give that to him while he's close and can hear it. First wave of red, 5.33. Show off. <laughs> Time call 19 minutes and 25 seconds. So I met um, I met Gaio in the Basque Country while I was over there working in uh, a WQS, uh -huh. and um, he was one of the top coaches to their big wave surfer from Nazare, Ashi Munyain. Um, also, also Aritz Aramburo was a really hot uh, tour surfer from that side, and um, he has always been a really, really hot surfer himself. So it's not like something that he just discovered later on. He, um, I believe he had a, uh, an eye disease that actually um, gradually took his vision away. What is that thing white? I'm sorry? Is that white heat? What it is? Is that yellow, red, white, white point? Oh, no. ask, ask the priority guy, not the bike. So we got a little open office over here. We got people coming in, <laughs> people just grab, grabbing your grapes. Stroll in and just say whatever they want. And uh, we got Deb over here asking for autographs on her shirt. I was happy 
to uh, to sign her shirt. Got scores on the board. A tour, your current AASP world champ in this division with a 5.33 on the board. He's not going to be happy about that. He'll definitely want to look up a backup for that. I know Ator. He is a hungry, vicious competitor, and he definitely wants to go in the excellent range. So we'll be waiting to see what he does with the rest of this 17, this 18 minutes on the board. Now, he Kirk Watson, Watson, he's he's a vicious competitor too. He's been out to the U.S. Open a couple times. I know he's competed at the the ISA uh, the ISA event. Uh, a few times representing Australia. So, so Ator has a has a nickname. You keep calling him. What's what's that nickname? Gallo is his nickname, which Gallo. means rooster. Uh, I, yeah. All right. So the Gallo. In Mexico, it means something else. Yeah. Orale. Orale. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, Kirk Watson bunk, from Bungan Beach, surfing for 42 years, 2023 ISA Para World Champ, 2019 U.S. Open Para Surfing Champion, 2021 ISA Para World Champ, and uh, yeah, all of these guys are seasoned competitors, and there's not a lot of competitors in this division, so we pretty much see the same top guys meeting. One guy that we are missing here is uh, Ricardo Figuidil from uh, Brazil's always. He's been a really hot competitor in this no vision division. Um, bon dia, Figgy. Yeah, Figgy's come to the U.S. Open a couple times, too. So we're missing him. He's made it to Hawaii. He hasn't done the tour, though. So, you know, we, well, that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to build this thing so we get all the best guys. I mean, we're missing some real some real top competitors for one reason or another, maybe injury, maybe, uh, maybe unable to travel. There's numerous reasons, but... Uh, uh, we want to definitely throw a huge shout out to Bruno Hansen. Bruno, we miss you, brother. We hope you heal White, up. Second priority red, 16 minutes and 20 seconds. Bruno got injured uh, training again. So he was training for the world tour. He had some health issues before the tour uh, in 2023. He was taking that time to get healthy. Uh, he was down in Panama at his place in Panama in uh, Cambutal. And he was... And we really miss you, Brew. We're wishing you the best. We hope you heal up. Uh, you have laid the groundwork. Second wave, 1.0, 2.33, and 1.0. For a lot of what's happening here, and we we just we're waiting for you, man. The tour will be here when you heal up, bud. Yeah, Bruno's one of my favorite people at the uh, at the after party of the comps too, <laughs> and um, unfortunately. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to hold up that side for him. Yeah, you're gonna have to hold it down for Bruhan. Uh, so I, I had the good fortune to uh, Sean Ryan, who's a, a, a great adaptive surfer. He's, tr he's, tr he's training to come out in 2025. So he let me know, hey man, I'm not doing the tour this year, but I am training for next year. Uh, Sean Ryan has a place in Cambutal, and that's the same town that Bruno lives in. And I had the good fortune to go down there and sh stay with Sean and uh, stay at his place in Cambutal and got to hang out with Bruno, and got to take go fishing with Bruhan, and uh, got to surf with Sean down in Cambutal. And it was a great place. Panama is such an amazing country, beautiful country. Got to go fishing, caught me a nice amberjack on my, on my, uh, my new fishing rig. So it was a real fun trip. And uh, can't wait to go back to Panama, man. It's an amazing place. And the watermelon tastes like candy. <laughs> well, we got some pretty good watermelon here that they, uh, they've they been serving us up on the warmer days. No watermelon out today, but they do have watermelon due for tomorrow since we'll have nicer weather. We'll have that heat coming back. And, uh, yeah, as we looked out at the top of the point, there was some news that Cape Byron and Julian Rocks in Byron Bay are to be officially known by their indigenous names, and that's something that happened yesterday right here so you'll see that periodically as these guys make their way back up the beach on your screen now you see red lined up sort of towards that mid section and we can hear the cheers of Gallo's daughter here she was about I think six the first time I saw her in Basque Country and now she's um, yelling at dad telling him he needs to practice more and she's she's on him yeah his daughter's amazing uh, you know Ator's never had a problem being driven and and practicing and being at the top of his game you want to see a vicious competitor this guy ator is is out of his mind when it comes to like just being on top of it training 
co contacting us all the time for the contest. When are the events? When's registration open? You know, just making sure that he's on top of it because he won the world championship. He doesn't want to give it up. He wants to keep it. And uh, the more you can see that we've got three in the division here today. So we don't know how many we're going to get in Hawaii, hopefully four or five, you know, and that way we open up a second heat and we get a semifinal and then we go to the finals. But uh, the more exposure that we get, the more athletes are coming out. And Ator has a second score on the board of a one. You might want to let him know that, Benny. I don't know if he even knew that he took off, but. Red second wave, 1.0. Red in the lead with a 5.33 and a 1.0. Kirk Watson, white in second with a 2.33 and a 1.0. Time called 12 minutes. And Red up and riding, really just manhandled his way against that offshore wind to push down the whitewash on that one. A short ride, but he will get scored. He was on his feet and produced a little bit of speed and you can see him calling out to his uh, spotter. The communication is going to be much, much harder today as um, the audio si signal from trying to keep it, those vocal commands and the communication between the spotter and the surfer is going to be much harder with this wind. And that's where the hand commands come in like you, you made note of before where I thought he was kind of doing a claim where he was actually letting his spotter know where he was. I think that wave that he just caught is definitely going to ditch that 1.0. So it's it's not going to be much more than that, but it'll ditch that and it'll increase his lead. He's um, he's really in tune with his equipment. Axel Lorenz with Pukas, the top brand in Spain. And Axel Lorenz is one of the winners of the Stab in the Dark Shaper of the Year. Nice. Uh, Runner-up when I was over there in Spain. But uh, really tuned up with the equipment and also have worked with him a lot with the the extra timing needed in taking off the extra paddle power to get in there and make yep. sure that you're into the wave and so we have seen that second uh, last score the third score for red will give him that score that score for you guys at red, home last wave 2.93 red a 2 in the lead now three. with a 5.33 and a 2.93 White is in second with a 2.33 and a 1.0. Time called 10 minutes and 30 seconds. Hey, can you guys move out in front of the priority board? We need to be able to see the priority board. Lou, can you step back just a little bit? Thank you, sweet. No, no, no. No, it was you. It was you. <laughs> So one thing I wanted you to notice, Ben, is when Ator and his and his spotter got out of the water, that they weren't just walking back; they were communicating, they were talking. Yeah. You know, so his spotter was telling him something. Ator was talking back to him, telling him something, saying, "This is what I see. This is what I feel. Next time, let's go here, maybe up farther." Um, there's just like I said before, we've talked about the the teams. We got Yellow trying to get up and riding. Steve Fox trying to get into that one. That's not going to get into there, but yeah, and his his arms didn't, or his hands didn't leave the rail, so I don't think they'll judge that as a ride just yet. But nine minutes and thirty seconds. But yeah, as you talk about that communication, he's coming in. He's coming in. Um, as you talk about the communication, it is really up to the spotter to paint the picture because you're you're having to actually let them predict what the wave's going to do and let them w know what the wave probably will do as they're taking off so that they can kind of plan out their or and orchestrate their maneuvers before they even take off on the wave. Right. And when I worked with, with Matt Formston uh, in Oceanside at your comp, we had to kind of say, this one's fat, you're going to need to fade back, let it build up on the inside. We have another little paddle there. He's not up yet. And um, then the ones that would run, tell them to jam down the line, but you use very limited vocabulary, so you just have these very easy, clear, clear and concise uh, directions between the spotter and the surfer. The thing in, the, in this case is these guys can't see at all, so right. there's even more communication needed. Yeah, it's uh, it's teamwork with the assisted divisions, and even though in the blind division you cannot touch the the person, the the spotter can't touch the can't touch the surfer unless they're in real danger, then they might be able to help them. But as far as when calling them into the waves, they're unable to physically hey touch them. Yellow up and riding, Steve yeah. Fox down the line. He did get a score on that first one, but he'll get a second score right here. His first score was a 0 0.67, but this is going to better that. 
Definitely will. And it was great that he just happened to be a little bit farther in to help himself into that. We saw the earlier waves with the offshore kind of pushing that that longboard out the back. He's got that big round nose, which turns into a sail with this offshore. Yeah, he's going to have, uh, he's going to be challenged definitely paddling into waves while this wind is like this. So yellow's first wave was a 0 0.67. We'll have another score, or possibly two scores to work out. We'll keep you updated as those scores come in. Seven minutes and 45 seconds remaining. Once again, the yellow's first wave was a 0 0.67. Mm, yellow up and riding on the inside. He's going to go up and down on that. So we'll be getting another score for that as he did get to his feet. And there was a little bit of open face on the wave. So I'm sure that they're going to score that as well. So. Yeah, and so I, I love that strategy of... I mean, he might not have even meant to take off on the wave, but he's already inside, and, and any time you can get up, it's not only going to speed your way up under the inside and let them redirect faster, but um, it's also going to amount in a score, and it looks like we've got a couple scores in. Second wave for yellow, 2.77. Third wave of yellow is a 0 0.83. So change in situation, yellow's in second, white is in third. Red leading the heat with a 5.33 and a 2.93. Yellow Steve Fox are now in second with a 2.77 and a 0 0.83. The last wave that you stood up on just brought a 0 0.60 that doesn't factor into the top two, but you are in second with a 2.77 and a 0 0.83. Kirk Watson in third with a 2.33 and a 1.0, six minutes and 30 seconds. Talk about it. This wind has been a little bit crazy today. We had the super clean conditions yesterday. We had some really challenging conditions the day before that, but very good waves. And on day one, the surf was, was really good. So uh, even though the, the, the conditions as far as the, the rain and the wind have changed, the waves have been on offer, man. And there's been plenty enough, uh, plenty enough waves coming through to get good scores. Yeah, and this, this corner of the pass is just a complete machine. Perfect point set up, and even on the worst days, even with the most wind, we've still seen these rights reeling across. And so five minutes and 40 seconds, and surprisingly, it looked very, very challenging when we walked up, and uh, I was a little bit worried about uh, these guys getting waves and getting in the right position, but, man, they have... Uh, They've definitely capitalized on what's out there, and we're seeing some some great rides and some great scores. I don't think the current is as as shifty as it's been the first couple days. I think the current actually has kind of calmed down, and that's why these guys aren't having to go all the way up to the pass to paddle out. They're actually just going up the point a little ways, and then they're just shooting out, and then they're drifting right in front of this spot right here where they've kind of found that little peak. It's offered these scores with a you know a tour with a, a heat top score of a 5.33 and he's going on this one it's a little bit late trying to get to his feet but he's just going to go over on that one free surfer coming into the free area free surfers out front if you can go farther down to tomos we'll appreciate it thanks so much We've had quite a few free surfers kind of come through the area a bunch of little groms and it's kind of hard to avoid with the pass and the and the the wind that's coming through right now and how quick little snap on that section Feels his way, the little, little bit of a cross chop right there, kind of ended the ride, but he'd gotten two turns already out of the way before that. I'm pretty sure that's gonna drop that 2.93. It might even challenge that 5.33 because he got some real good open face, stayed up in the pocket out in front of it. So we might see uh, we might see a better score for him on that one. Yeah, and also um, the one nuance for the judging is the rhythm and the flow between maneuvers. And he got up, no dead space. You can see, gets up as soon as he gets some speed, he's already done a snap. And driving across that, feeling his way, even goes for a little go. turn after the end of the wave. There you go, you called it. Gets he gets rewarded for it. It's a 5.50, he tops that 5.33. Uh, Last of red, 5.50. Red stays in the lead now with a 5.50 and a 5.33. Time call, just under three minutes. First priority white, second priority yellow, third priority is red. Looks like there's some communication where they're just maybe just saying, you know what, the current's not too bad. We can turn around right here and we can just paddle right out. So like we were just talking about the current, well, it looks like they changed their mind. They said, nope, spotter says, look, we're not going to make it. We need to turn around and run a little bit up. And he's even given some hand signals and saying we're okay. 
we're just going to jot up the beach a little bit there. But, uh, you know, being able to call the U.S. Open and, and commentating there and seeing these guys, I see the competitors and I know what they're happy with and what they're not, you know, after seeing them for so many years. And these guys like Ator, you know, you know he's not going to want to just sit on a 5-3-3. He's getting those open face parts of the wave. And that's how, how incredibly hard and, and how, and, you know, much of a feel that you have to have for the ocean and the waves to have zero vision, but to be able to feel the open face of a wave just by the, you know, when you're standing up and, on a, and you know, just to be able to get into it, you know, it's uh, for me, it's, you know, I've tried to take off on wave different level than us. Looks like we're having a kind of. No, little, I think we had a graphic from. Heat. A graphic from a previous competition there. <laughs> a little extra heat coming down. <laughs> a six-man heat. We were like, what? We don't have six-man heat. So we're going to count down the end of the heat. Five, four, three, two, one. And there you go. Ator winning his first heat with a combined score of a 10.83, a 5.33 on his first wave, and on his last wave, a 5.50. So, ATR starting with a good wave and ending with a good wave, kinda with that Ben Way formula of talking about how those guys have structure in their heat and they wanna make sure that. All right, we're gonna move into our next heat. This will be the unassisted prone, heat one. I'm sorry. Active advice. It's the foundation on which insurance advisenet is built, and it has seen us become one of Australia's leading general insurance broker networks by providing sound, active advice, personalised service, and the right solutions for every client. It's a responsibility we've never lost sight of, and we never will. For your local advisor, search insurance advisenet today. Pro, and we are on day four of competition. We just finished our first division of the day, which was the blind no vision, which was taken by Aitor Gallo Francisena from Basque Country in Spain. And now we have an opening score for Red Kai Collis, our tour champion, defending champion. Yes, sir. Red's first wave 3.33. Fourth priority is with Red. Time called 22 minutes and 30 seconds. Once again, red first wave, 3.33. So we got a kind of a stacked heat here. We've got Kai Colas, who's your defending champ on his rookie season of the AASP Tour. He takes down all the old vets, and he claims his first title at 15 years old. And we have Jay Stevens, who I'm not real familiar with, but we got Parker Olenek, who was a junior U.S. Open champion. And right here, Parker Olenek taking off, going right, staying high and tight. Nice trim right there. Park on his new Kings board, trying to race that section. Park's going to be happy with that in the semifinals. Yeah, he is looking happy, and he's calling to where the chair or yep. where the catchers can look pick at him look up. Look at him, look at him. He's like, I want to get out, and I want another wave. White, is that white or red? Red up and riding? Yeah, out the back, Kai right. had just gotten another one behind and, Parker. Ooh, White taking off too. Jay pulling into a barrel. We got all <laughs> kinds of action happening here. All three, all three surfers taking off. Looked like White pulled up into the into the section right there. Got a nice little cover up. I don't know if we're gonna get a, I don't know if we're gonna get a, a recording of that. But look at the urgency that these guys are coming in with. Kai catches a wave behind Parker. 
gets out in front of Parker. Now he's going to try to call for a chair as quickly as he can. Look at Parks right behind him. These guys are urgent. They're like, we got to get out of the water. We got to get up the point. We got to get another wave with 21 minutes left in the heat. Flurry of exchanges right here. And we're waiting on scores for Parker. We're waiting on scores. Nico Gallegos snapping it, coming down, trying to get out of that, but he's not going to make it. But Nico out there trying to just put an exclamation point on that one. Yeah, and as you pointed out, Kai took off after Parker, but we have such an uneven bottom out there and the currents and little pockets out there that uh, Kai's route to the way inside got him through and across those currents faster than Parker. He's already on the chair, and we'll see There's Parker getting on the chair in just Kai's a second. Kai's dad running him up the beach, grabbing his board, saying, look at Kai's got his own team of little homies that are just like, not going to wear out the water support. He's got his little homies from school and his dad running him up the beach. Yep, dad. Look dad, how fast they are, man. Dad Clint is uh, quite a runner, we're seeing, as he's making the kids keep up with him. Yeah. And there's uh, the cousins with the Go Kai sign and yeah, the Australian buddy. flag. You could sure bet that Brooks uh, out there somewhere cheering her, cheering her heart out right now for Kai. Red's last wave, 5.67. Red goes to the lead now with a 5.67 and a 3.33. Parker Olnick, 3.27 for your opening wave. White, Jay Stevens, you have a 2.67. And blue, Nicholas Gallegos has a 1.67 and a 0 0.83. And we have a free surfer that's just kind of surfing through the zone. Free surfer in the blue jersey. You're in the contest area. This guy. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I no, just it's have to it's also you. such a strong point it break is, that is, no man. matter how far outside of the area you start, you're you, probably you gonna get swept through. in, you no matter what. Through it, man. So it just shows that that uh, the swell right now is is buzzing. The wind's buzzing. There's good surf. These guys are getting carried all the way from 500 yards up the beach, uh, from the from the top of the pass, and uh, seeing what's going on. So 19 minutes remaining. Jay Stevens, 19 minutes remaining. Parker, your first wave is a 3.27. White's first wave, 2.67. Oh. Um. Yeah, I'll drop these tomatoes in there. So Chaka always just comes into the booth to eat lunch. Like I, I don't think I've seen him without lunch here. I just don't offered me don't a be sandwich. focusing on tomatoes when we're watching White run up the what? beach, brother. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? She's offering me sandwiches, man. I can't be stuck on the beach in my wheelchair. Uh, you know, with no food, man. It's De terrible. Debbie's beauty is very distracting. We know this, but let's keep it on the screen. So sorry. here we have our crew running up. Sorry, everybody up, up there that can hear us and everybody on stream. Sorry about that. We got some hungry heads here, man. It's, it's to be understood. It's almost lunchtime here in Australia, 12, 12.30 local time. And I'll give these guys the remaining time so they know while they're running down the beach. And there is priority with Just blue. 18 minutes, 17 minutes and 45 seconds. Once again, red with a 5.67 and a 3.33. Yellow has a 3.27. White has a 2.67, and blue scores are 1.67 and 0 0.83. Time call 17 and a half minutes. First priority, blue. Blue has first priority. So we've got our riders relocating up to the top of the point. We do have that strong, strong sweep. I think we've, we're almost past the bottomed out low tide where we things, see things speed up as the incoming tide kind of increases the power and energy off the top of the point. And we are looking at our prone unassisted semifinal one. The top two out of this division will go and it looks like they, Nico got a second score. Looks like Nico's second score is a 2.17. It puts a change in the situation. Nico Blue moves up into second place. 
Blue's last wave, 2.17. Change in situation. Blue goes to second with a 2.17 and a 1.67. Yellow's now in third with a 3.27. And white in fourth with a 2.67. 16 minutes remaining. First priority red. Looks like another free surfer kind of floating around out there. If we could call them out of their bend. Surfers in the contest area, please make your way down towards Main Beach. We appreciate your co your cooperation. Please paddle out of the competition area. So we got a couple free surfers making their way in. One thing that does help is normally we're trying not to uh, try not to mix up the priority judges with who's in the in the heat and who's not. Luckily, with the prone. Uh, division we know a standing surfer is not one of the competitors <laughs> in this but either way it's a little bit difficult it got a little janky yesterday when they were surfing through with the standing below knee guys and we had to really kind of take a look and what we got uh, coming up the beach here is nico running up the beach give him a time check give him a time check nico gallegos 15 minutes remaining you're in second place with a 2.17 and a 1.67 Yellow's in third with a 3.27, and fourth white has a 2.67. And Nico, in typical Nico fashion, blowing kisses to everybody that's cheering him on. Nico was stoked to make the semifinals. He's going to be Kai Cole is taking off right here. Drop arm, cut back in the critical section. Snap floater comes down and pulls that off. That's going to be a huge score right there for Kai Colas. That's going to wipe everything out there. That's going to be probably in the excellent range now right White there. White will have first priority. You see how he drops his arm. Oh, he's just skirting in, just doing little snaps on the inside too. So if they're accounting length of ride, I don't know if they're going to count that little snap, but that was cool. Uh, it's the same wave, man. That's still uh, scoring potential yeah, all the way through. But that floater, he just rode it up and just hung on and just let it take him down. And wow, what a great maneuver for Kai. Showing you why Kai Colas is your current AASP world champ. And he does not want to relinquish the belt. He's like, you know what? I'm keeping this, man. And you're going to have to fight tooth and nail to get this from me. We're waiting on that score. But I think that's going to be up in the excellent range. Yeah, and we saw in his earlier heat, he did that same maneuver. He punched up underneath oh. through the lip and dropped it down, and he sticks on that thing like glue. That is his brand new board from Wood Surfboards. Okay, He's I got was, that single center handle. I was real wrong on that. Score came through, and it's a 3.97. Yeah, I think he just got more direction changes, a little more of a combination score on his earlier one. Yep. But uh, still, building uh, building on his score line, and he's in the lead. Wow, I thought that Last was a... Last red, 3.97. A little bit better than a 3.93. It was a really nice and maneuver. And a 3.97. Time called 13 minutes. I think a 3.97. So there they are. These kids are going to be hungry for lunch after all this running. I don't. I, I just think this is another day at the beach for them, dude. <laughs> I think Kai's got his crew, man, and when he wants to go surf, he's like, "Hey, I'm going surfing. Run me up the beach," and that's what they're doing. Free surfer, taking a good one. Yeah, and so on the screen, um, it's, the camera's not always necessarily on the competition area, so don't need to grumble at these guys for being in the zone. Sometimes we're just kind of eyeing up the top of the peak. And anyone who is kind of in a dangerous position or can obstruct the the view of the priority judges, we're clearing them out real quickly. 12 minutes and 20 seconds. And there's our water safety. I think that might be Zane on the jet ski. Mono son Zane. He had left his phone on the jet ski yesterday and he was having to leave to work and he's like, I don't know what to do. Can we call those guys in or what should we do? And so 12 minutes remaining, and we've seen some great scores. There is this huge beach and the huge stretch all the way to the top of the point. And so these uh, in-between waves takes a bit of time. And we see Parker Olnick kind of relocating here. Yeah, my last wave that I caught yesterday in my heat, Zane pulled up on me in the in the jet ski. He didn't wait for it to stop. He just dove in the water and <laughs> grabbed onto me. Okay. So we love Zane. He is his father's son, man. He loves the water. He loves helping. He loves this community. And uh, you can tell, man, he just, he's given it his all. 
and uh, their daughter as well. Uh, the uh, Takira's out here volunteering and running up and down the beach, helping people and up top doing crazy stuff with her mom. And so it's a family affair here at the Blackmore Australia Pro Adaptive Surfing Championships, the first leg of the Visit Oceanside Adaptive Surfing Professional World Championship Tour, kicking it off with an excellent, excellent event here in Byron Bay. Yeah, we've had amazing previous days of surf since day one. Now on day four of competition for this 2024 Blackmore's Australian Adaptive Pro. And once again, as Chaka mentioned before, first leg of a four-leg tour for the Visit Oceanside Adapt Association of Adaptive Surfing Professionals Tour. And uh, just giving a chance to get more people from around the globe into this amazing sport. We're very fortunate to have this webcast going too, so we want to thank the, the sponsors for that. Uh, this webcast is giving more opportunity for people to see what we're doing out here at the level that we're doing it. The expectation for the sport is pro level, you know, and we want all of the goodness. We want the same thing that every other pro surfer gets, which is an excellent spot, you know, great surf, great opportunities. And that's what you're seeing here in Byron Bay at the pass. This is a very elite surf break and we're seeing high scores. Uh, from day one to day four right now. Time call, nine minutes and 45 seconds. First priority yellow, second priority red. Yes, I've just seen beautiful waves all over this huge stretch of beach here. And uh, these guys are loving it and no one can capitalize on this offshore and barrels like the prone divisions where they're nice and low and also aerodynamic, not getting affected by the wind as much as the standing divisions would get. I'm trying to, I'm trying to coach so Mono. Oh. Live action, we have Red again, quickly to the top of the point. Redirects it, does a little check turn there, gets a quick snap. A lot of speed here, getting a little bit out in front of it. Now he's connecting to another section and gets under it, comes zooming out and the tail drifts around a little bit on that one, but got some travel and definitely reached some high speeds on that one. That should be a nice score for him. I don't want to try to predict one right now. That was actually the first score I didn't get right, but uh, I was trying to coax Mono into coming in here and giving us a few words, but he told me to buzz off. He's going to go surf. <laughs> well, he's got game face on, man. Oh, he's, he's coming surfing. up. He's got a heat coming up. I didn't even see that. I forgot about that. Mono is uh, in one of the next heats coming up. He's got his game face on. He's looking. I thought he was going for a free surf, but uh, now that I look at him, he's got... Uh, He's got the thousand yard stare in his eyes right now. He's looking for blood. Yeah, so eight minutes remaining and we're gonna have another score for red, I believe. I think Kai Colas has the NASCAR team of adaptive surfing, you know, and they pull up in NASCAR and Oh yeah, the, the pit crew. <laughs> the pit the crew. pit crew is super speedy. Yeah, they got his pit crew and they jump on and we'll buzz you up the beach and then off he goes and couple new tight couple new tires <laughs> <laughs> so kai's got uh, all right we got that score in and okay your judging's coming together here <laughs> it's took a, a took a couple took a couple bites of your subway sandwich to get the the neurons going here 8.67 for kai's last wave red last wave 8.67 got an 8.67 and a 5.67 in the lead Jay Stevens has a 2.67 and a 1.90. Kai claiming that one up the beach. Nicholas Gallegos in third has a 2.37 and a 2.17. Parker ne take off late in that one, trying to hook it. Nico only needs a 2.21 to advance, so he basically just needs to take off and do a turn, and uh, he'll be in position to move into second place. Nick, yellow just took off. All right, so Kai Kalas extending his lead position with an 8.67 and a 5.67. Seen some amazing rides. Yeah, Kai Kolas. Six and a half minutes. Kai Kolas putting a stamp on that one. Um, you know, I really thought that that other wave that, that they gave him a 3.97 for those maneuvers that he did, there was like a real kind of drop arm cut back on that and then the big off the top. But uh, 
the length of ride on that one in the section, critical section that he stayed in, little roller coaster, little check snaps that he was doing. Uh, it really it really showed in the score. So 8.67, Kai going excellent in the semifinal. Everybody else got their work cut out for him. Yellow second wave, 0 0.73. Parker, you have a 3.27 and a 0 0.73. Time call, five minutes and 45 seconds. So yeah, this is uh, this has been really exciting seeing these guys. Basically, you got one guy on the beach while one's still out there, so the action's kind of nonstop. And we saw Parker try to hook into that little barrel, a little bit of a late drop, but he was rewarded for that with a 0 0.73. Give yeah. Nico a, a time check while he's on the beach. Nico, five minutes and 25 seconds. Got uh, White in there too, so at least both of them get that time check. They know at least. Yeah, I want to make sure that that is his last wave score. I think that he just got swept down the beach a little bit. I saw him paddling over so here. Nicholas Blue, you have a 2.37 and a 2.17. Nico just needs a 2.2, 2. 2. 2.21 to take over second place in advance to the finals. Time call, five minutes. Parker needs a 1.33. Yeah, so blue is in third, needing 2.21 to advance. Yellow in fourth, needing a 1.3. Four minutes and 30 seconds. Is that what you said? <laughs> That's what it says on here, but that doesn't make much sense that Nico's in second and he needs more for, for to get into second place than, uh, than third does. But maybe it's I'm not going to I'm not going to question the system. Uh, it's, I think it's because of the, the his Parker's wave uh, higher score. It's a higher scoring first wave. So Nico doesn't have a 3.27. Parker does. So that lessens his that lessens the the time call wave four needed. minutes. Yeah. So even though it is windy, the the rain has calmed down a bit. It was I look like a I look like a wet rat. And I always get punished for showing up early here. And so, so I, I was here with uh, with Mono in the morning to find out that I figured we would be on hold, but just in case, I came down. You have to. And uh, yeah, I was a bit moist when I got back to our spot. Well, I, fortunately for me, uh, Mono gave me a shout out and said, "Hey, man, we're just going to be on hold here." Unfortunate for you that he didn't give you the shout out. Yeah, we don't have an announcer's chat going, which we might get that thing going uh, a little next, later next on for time, tomorrow. I tried <laughs> to call you. I was calling you on WhatsApp, and uh, it was a little too late. You're already like, hey, I'm already down here. Uh, but, yeah, one, one cool thing was I zipped back, and knowing that we were going to have a midday start, uh, Stevie Ginger took me for a spin down to Bob McTavish's factory, and I was able to meet the man who is basically um, – one of the people to thank, along with George Greeno, in making our boards shorter. And so they are have a lot to, to be thankful or We have a lot to be thankful for. And tonight, Bob McTavish will have a movie premiere and a band at Stonewood right by right nice. across from his factory. Right. A 0.67 and a 5.67. Jay Stevens in second with a 2.67 and a 1.90. Lose in third with a 2.37 and a 2.17. And yellow in fourth. Kai Cola's taken off. Drop arm cut back. Trying to get up in the section. Here he goes. Another drop arm check turn. Up into the style part of the section. He's get in the barrel. Side slipping sideways. He can't come out of that. I'm not sure that that's going to knock out that five, six, seven. Yeah, I don't figure that it would. It looked like he was trying to kind of uh, stall himself, pull himself up into the barrel. But... Um, uh, there's one thing with that board that he's riding. He's got these little kind of bonzer sized little side fins. And we have seen when he puts too much into it, it kind of breaks out and releases. And that's what happened there with uh, having the tail come down first, where you would uh, had his nose come down first, pulled him out with a little speed. He might have snuck out of that section, but he cut out early right. and just punch his way through the back. Right. Just get through that little barrel section right there. But uh, time call one minute and 10 seconds be waiting for a call on that one waiting for a score i'll let you know what that is when it comes out i don't know how red still has first priority uh, maybe because nobody else is out there everybody's still on the beach yeah everyone's just scattered like a 
like a bucket right, of Skittles out there. Taking off on this one. You call it, man. Time call, 45 seconds. Ooh. Wow. Oh, that was a very critical maneuver. He He's is stoked on that now. one. So now, listen, if, if I want to see the score on this one. 30 seconds. Because the 3.97 was a pretty good snap. He kind of floated up there and let the wave do most of the work. This one, he muscled his way up there, and he snapped at the top. So I, I, I want to say that this maneuver, that wave, uh, we're waiting on two scores, that which the first one will Ten challenge seconds. closely that 5.67. We're going to count down in five, four, three, two, one. So waiting on two scores. Good sco health changes everything. So don't accept age as a limit or a bad night's sleep. Feel strong inside and out. Keep learning new moves. And if you want to stop, stop. Let's go! Good health changes everything. Blackmores, 90 years of natural health expertise. For 60 years, PQSA and Home Care Plus have been there when it mattered. We're the experts in spinal cord injury and deliver quality, safe supports to people living with all disabilities with more than 5 million care hours provided in the last 10 years alone. We've grown into one of South Australia's largest and most trusted service providers, but we're not done yet. It's time for us to evolve. Join us on our journey as we unveil our new brand. Active Advice. It's the foundation on which insurance Advisornet is built and it has seen us become one of Australia's leading general insurance broker networks by providing sound, active advice, personalised service and the right solutions for every client. It's a responsibility we've never lost sight of and we never will. For your local advisor, search Insurance Advisornet today. All right, welcome back. This is day four of competition for this 2024 Blackmore's Australian Adaptive Pro. And we are on our third heat of the day. As we have some live action, Ryan Porteous just zipping through your screen there in yellow. So on the water, we did start our unassisted prone semifinal heat number two. As we have a rider coming on screen, that's Chris Astill in white. Bumps up over this one, gets over that double up. Looking very, very good. And uh, Chris Astill is riding a, a board that is modeled after screenshots of the boards that I've been making for Jose and for Jesse. I came down, I go, hey, wait a second. I'm like, I don't, remember making a, I don't remember making a blue step bottom. But uh, yeah, I think it looked like it was working well there as we have Joel Taylor. So we'll have, uh, we've had a lot of rides happening in that first couple minutes of this heat. We're gonna catch up on some scores and keep these guys updated. So Chris Steele burst onto the scene last year at the Hawaii Adaptive Surfing Championships. Uh, at the start of the tour, he was very unfamiliar with uh, the tour and, and how it worked and all the events, but he really made a statement there making the finals. He was in the mix for the World Championship. If he would have won the US Open, he would have won the title. So he was one of the three or four guys in there that was in that mix. Him, Casey Proud, uh, Kai Colas, those guys were all in there in the mix. Ryan Porteous was in the mix. It would be um, really fun to see Casey on this wave too, man. I'd love, love if he was on the mix in this one. And here's Joel Taylor's wave oh. in the barrel. Joel Taylor just pulls oh. it and he came out. What? How did we miss that? Joel Taylor deep in the barrel slips out the doggy door. Well, let's see what the score on that is. Yeah, and I mean, Joel coming from being one of the top bodyboarders in Australia has that super comfortable stance. He has that kind of staggered grip on the board. And then uh, he's also riding this equipment that's got that nice wide tail that just wants to 
push out of anything. So even if the wave closes out, all that energy is going to want to push that board with some forward energy, pushing him through the lip. And also helps a little with this offshore, too, kind of softening the lip up a little bit. Yep. He gets a 6.0 for that first ride, and uh, Chris is still. All right, we have opening scores. White's first wave, 6.83. Red, Joel Taylor, first wave, 6.0. Yellow, Ryan Porteous, 2.50. And Yellow, Sean up and Kaplan, 1.0. Ryan Porteous on another one. Time call, 21 minutes. Driving down the line, staying high. Here comes Joel Taylor again, down the line. Call that if you'd like, Ben. Yep, high line right there. He's looking at this section. Knows to hit that thing high, get ready for that lip to come down, and times it perfectly. Now he's going to uh, change his stance, reform it on a left here, and he's still got scoring potential if he can find something on the inside here, but looks more like he's just kind of taxiing his way in to get a ride back up to the top of the point, but that will be his second ride. I'm telling you, this division will be one of the most vicious savage. And down, here's the replay. You call it. Okay. So he hooks it right there. It looks like he was hopefully trying trying to get in the barrel off the takeoff. He realized that wasn't going to happen. Gets over that midsection and places himself perfectly with enough speed to come up off that end section for a big float blast right there on the corner. So we'll see what he gets scored for that second one. Well, no matter what that, that score is, it'll, it'll catapult him up into first place. And that will leave Chris Steele to uh, to try to get uh, a second wave. And it looks like first priority is with yellow. Ryan Porteous, I'm not sure where so, he is. So we are, uh, we are doing the round-robin format. Now that we are in the semis, we are having riders eliminated, right? Yeah, that's it. Round-robin is for the first round only, and that's it. Once it goes to a semi, it's a it's, uh, single elimination. Top two move, uh, top two. Highest scores move on to the finals. All right, Joel Taylor, last wave, 4.83 change in situation. Red goes to the lead with a 6.0 and a 4.83. Chris Astle has a 6.83. Ryan Porteous, second wave, 3.0. Yellow's in third with a 3.0 and a 2.50, needing 3.84 to advance. And Sean Catlin is in fourth with a 1.0, needing a 5.84 to advance. Hi, buddy. <laughs> 19 minutes remaining. Yeah, so I had a, stopped and had a, a beer with Ryan Porteous and his buddy Bjorn, who actually is from his same hometown in Santa Barbara and just happened to be here at the same time. And uh, we had a beer and talked about uh, boards and, and fins and all sorts of things. And they're huge uh, George Greeno fans, as I am. Also originally from Santa Barbara, living here close to Mono for not a, uh, for a long, long time. And uh, he's riding a, kind of a, a Greeno-inspired wide, wide tail with the Greeno fin in this board. Riding a single fin board. You can see, you can't see it from this angle, but he's motoring on up. And... Uh, we're now just seven minutes into the heat, and we've already got some big scores on the board. And then you can see Kai Collis's Chicken Joe board made by Wood Surfboards being carted up. That thing has gotten him some great scores. And as you look out here, look at these beautiful conditions. You've got these lines with these beautiful offshore lines, offshores holding it open, and as we have that tide turning around, starting to push in, we're seeing a little bit more punch, and they're also starting to see that current come back, which is taking these guys farther down the line. Seventeen minutes and twenty seconds remaining. Joel Taylor currently leading the heat with six point zero and four point eight three. Joel Taylor, new on the scene and uh, back to surfing after 20 years of a break, after breaking his back at Pipeline, and uh, got thrown right back, right into the adaptive world, and quickly is rising to the top as one of the the new uh, hot competitors. Yeah, and he, uh, apparently he's the Australian national champ in that division. I believe he claimed the ISA uh, uh, amateur world champ uh, in that division as well. So yeah, and he also got uh, I think Parasurfer of the Year here in Australia. That's awesome. 
But uh, yeah, one is whole career he's been riding in that same staggered prone stance so it just makes sense that it's a perfect transition he just had to start to use uh, a board that he's able to paddle in now that he doesn't have the swim fins to get him into the waves yeah much different style of surfing uh, as far as getting into the waves and the and the board that he's riding, but you can tell that that bodyboard style for him has carried over. A lot of times he'll use his arms to lift the board up and kind of projectile himself up there. He uses tiny bonzer fins on his board. Have you seen his board? Yeah. It's like little tiny bonzer fins, even smaller. There's not a, a middle fin holding him in. It's just two side bite bonzer fins, and, and that's it. So I was real surprised to see the style of his, uh, the fins that he was using and to see the, the maneuverability that he gets on that board and the way that he can kind of hold the pocket on it. Yeah, the other thing is bodyboarders are used to not using fins and using only rail for control, um, not to mention having the swim fins on their feet that kind of work his keels. And so he's able to have a lot more rail control even without the fins. So he doesn't need a ton of stability and a ton of um, uh, control besides just using those sharp rails and having just enough to hold his high line in barrels. Well, like I said, man, this division is going to be a bloodbath, man. These guys are all hungry. Uh, they're all coming for Kai's title, but you can see Kai, <laughs> Kai ain't budging an inch, man. He's he's set the standard for what this division's going to look like for the 2024 season by posting a perfect score in, a, in the previous day's competition and posting some excellent scores right here. He posted a, an 8.63 in that last heat. So Kai putting everybody on notice, man. The champ is here. Time call, 14 minutes and 40 seconds. First priority white. And that's what I love about Kai, man. He's not backing down. He's not shying away. He's 15 years old. He stepped into the professional platform, wrestled the title away from some old timers, some guys that have put in the time. And you can tell Kai, every day of the US Open that I arrived early on the scene, there was one prone surfer out there free surfing before their heats. And it was Kai Colas. Oh yeah, and he was putting in time and work. And I'm telling you, man, uh, the, you know, you know as good as anybody else. Southside Oceanside Harbor is no joke. And during the U.S. Open uh, in 2023, we had some stack surf, and every single day was no less than three foot, three to four foot. Finals day was upwards of five foot on some of the sets. And Kai Colas, even on finals day, was out there taking a beating, catching killer waves, and just learning the break and getting that knowledge that he needed to, to take that final step. He knew that he was in a four-man race with three other guys for the title, and he knew it was going to come down to whoever won the U.S. Open, and he was determined, He and he came out with it. And now look at He's determined this year to say, you know what? I'm going to set the pace. I'm going to set it, and it's going to be with tens, eights, high eights, and excellent scores throughout the competition. So big ups to Kai Colas for setting the standard. Yeah, the... Um that was another comp with a vicious current going the opposite way as we had uh, one of the steepest directions south that we'd had in, I think, 15 years or something. And I've never seen, usually you're safe on the north side of the pier because it bleeds off the current. But uh, as we were standing waiting for the heats to start, we had literally had boat wakes coming off of our legs in the shore break. The, the water was moving so fast, which that's makes it a lot more tiring for our teams as well as the athletes trying to get at back into position. Free surfer that just finished their ride, you're in the competition area. If you can start paddling to your left and get dragged on out, we appreciate. Thank you. And nice ride. 12 minutes and 30 seconds remaining. <laughs> don't First priority white, second priority red, third priority yellow, and don't, third priority blue. Don't encourage them, Ben. <laughs> no, you know what? I've, I've had so many beach commentators get angry and take it personal and yell sure. at the, the surfers. Sure. And then what do they do? They sit right there right. and don't listen to you. Well, we definitely want to uh, thank the local surfers for keeping the area clean and keeping it uh you know, they're, they're just passing through. They're just passing through. And, it, you know, it kind of looks pretty gnarly right now. This, the, 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 the wind is just blowing straight <laughs> offshore, man. It's, uh, it's really offering some good waves. You saw, you saw Joel Taylor pull into one and come out, got that 6.0 for that. We've seen a couple other guys pull into some, some big barrels and, and just not make it out, unfortunately. But the offer is there if you can find the right one. 
conditions are supposed to clean up really nice for tomorrow. Uh, this was a passing, just a, a passing front that was coming through. And hopefully by the afternoon, the later heats in the afternoon, it'll calm down just a little bit. But as of right now, we've got about 25 to 30 mile an hour winds straight offshore. And the boys are handling it. They're just going out and showing their merit. And uh, they're just uh, doing it. So 11 minutes remaining. Looks like we've just finished a ride by Chris Astle. He's working his way in. Chris Astle. Chris Astle. Yeah. Look, like I said, he's gonna, he's gonna, and they're clapping. So I, we didn't see it on camera. So I, I don't know if we missed that ride. If we can get a replay of that, that would be great. So but it sounds. Second wave of White was a 1.93. White's in the lead with a 6.8. Uh, White's in second with a 6.83 and a 1.93. Joel Taylor's still in the lead with a 6.0 and a 4.83. And live action as we saw Joel just drive off of that first section, float down carve as he's fighting that wind on this deep section. Now he's navigating, fades it back into the pocket. Looking for a little pocket to, to sneak up under. No barrel opportunity right there, but he's just navigating across these cross wedges. Links up on a completely separate wave here. And there's that little inside, and there's that float that he just loves. Gives it a little head shake. The wave, he, he was trying to set up for something big. It just didn't offer him really much after this really nice drop. And that snap right there coming down with a lot of speed. It looked like it was going to be on offer. And he just kind of goes up there and he's waiting. And it just kind of dribbled down a little bit. Stayed with an open face. Gave it a nice little check turn there. Stays with the speed. Gets a nice little up top right there, and then that's where it's just like, what happens right here? Let me see. It's going to split, and he's going to take the second, and he's going to get a nice little stand up right here, and bap. Nice little exclamation point for the end of that. So, And that score comes in as an excellent 9.17. Joel Taylor, last wave, 9.17. You're in the lead with a 9.17 and a 6.0. Live action on. The inside is Sean Catlin. Getting a couple turns on that one. He'll see another score as well. He had a 1.0 previous to that. Well, Time seems... Call eight minutes and 45 seconds. Seems like Joel Taylor is uh, throwing a shout out to Kai Colas and Yellow saying, look, first priority. you ain't the only one that can go excellent, kid. So eight minutes and 15 seconds. I think we'll also have another score to work out for blue. Here it is. Last of blue, 2.40. Sean, Catlin, you have a 2.40 and a 1.0. So currently first red, second blue. Third yellow needs a 5.77 to advance. And fourth blue needs a 6.37 to advance. Time call, eight minutes. Well, that was an exciting exchange right there. Blue just dropping in right here on a white foamy and kind of trying to get out in front of it. Gets a little speed right there in front of the white water. And that results in a 2.40. First priority yellow, second priority white. Looked like they were just dragging Joel Taylor out there by his by his collar. But Joel going excellent right there with the 9.17. And like I say, this thing's going to be vicious to watch these finals and to see what happens and develops over the next three stops after, after Friday, what happens in Hawaii. And if Joel Taylor makes the entire tour stop, I know Kai Colas is going to every stop. And they're not going to be letting up on anything. Kai and his family's been traveling the tour for the last couple of years. Uh, last year they made all the stops, made Costa Rica, made the U.S. Open, and went out to Hawaii. So that's the reason why. And all these other guys have made all the stops as well. So 
Well, someone's Surfing board flying up there in the back. <laughs> Pure carnage out there. Right that is now. one one thing with strong offshores like this. If you're not controlling your board, it's very easy to have it fly up and bap you in the face. It's, if you're not controlling your board, it's controlling you. That's for sure. <laughs> well, yeah, as we saw in that that uh, wave of Joel Taylor, it just seems like that side offshore is getting stronger and stronger as it kind of blew down those sections that he was that he was eyeing up. Yep. Yep. And as I was kind of trying to negotiate points of critical points to uh, the capitalize on, they yeah. just got blown out to sea, the same as that mini mal that we saw out in the water just now. Yeah, you could see the anticipation that he was trying to have with, with those sections standing up, and, and they just kind of didn't give him the opportunity that he thought they were going to give him. Time calls six minutes. Still, first red, second white. Third yellow needs a 5.77 to advance, and fourth blue needs a 6.37 to advance. But he still comes out with an excellent score nonetheless. The anticipation, those two nice little snaps at the top, and the exclamation point at the end of the wave results in an excellent score. Yeah, I think that first kind of drive floater bash was, was definitely fed to that score, and then there was that really nice carving cutback, which you could see all of that kind of that bodyboard-esque approach. Yep where that's where those small fins come into play is he's actually able to kind of drift that rail out a little bit more and kind of really butter it around. Yeah, kind of get up on his forearms to kind of push his board too. So, yeah, very, very nice, nicely scored wave. Time call, five minutes. Next heat is welcome to enter the water. Just don't go into the competition area until you hear the two horns to the end of the heat, please. So things are shaping up nicely, and uh, our friends at home, at least not the friends here at home, uh, would not know what it looked like this morning. You would not have been able to even see the ocean with the wind and the rain. You could not. I saw somebody did a live video down here. I think it was Sponge or one of the boys, and there was no visibility, even though you could see that the waves were offshore and there was some surf out there. You couldn't see anything other than just what was right on the shore. You could have seen me soaking wet with all my gear, <laughs> having my notes stick together. Yeah, trying to, I was trying to give you a shout out, bro, but it was too late. It was too late, man. Uh, that was, uh, I was very sorry to hear that. <laughs> I was like, oh no, Ben, don't go. Well, don't there's, go. there's one, uh, one, one thing in my system is I'll always be the first one to the site, doesn't matter where it is all that time in Japan, man, being slapped on the hand for being 20, 20 milliseconds late. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good habit, though. It is. Someone's got to show up. Uh, you know, uh, fortunately, I've, I've got an OCD thing of being prompt and not being late. Uh, that's why I was down here 10 minutes early trying to get trying to get cozy up here next to you in the sand. <laughs> you said OCD. I thought you were going to say Oceanside. I was about to say, oh, yeah, no, he's definitely, he's going to, he, he should be late then. No, nope, no. Nope. we're a bunch of cruisers, naturally. Chris is still moving down the line on this one. Getting real fast, streamlined, trying to get in front of it. Can't quite get any open face opportunities. Not sure that that's going to uh, outdo the 6.83. It might challenge that 1.93 and help him increase his lead over second place or over third place, excuse me, to try to keep his second place secure to move to the finals. Time is ticking down with three minutes, so that could, that could factor in as kind of a critical ride if it does challenge that 1.93. Yeah, we, see, we did see it kind of get tipped there. And that's, that's a design that, that I basically designed to be ridden as a twin fin. He's got a center fin in there, which, which at that, those kind of steep spots where the bottom drops out, that's going to make the board tip over that outside rail. And so I asked him if he'd used it as a twin fin before, and uh, it's finned a little bit, set up a little bit different than I've designed that bottom for. Mm -hmm. But uh, he was able to uh, capitalize on a 6.83 with it early on. Well, he, he does outdo that 1.93 with a 3.93 and increases his lead, uh, increases his second place security over third. Second, or last wave of white, 3.93. White, you stay in second place at the 6.83 and a 3.93. Yellow in third, now needing 7.76 to advance, and fourth blue needing 8.36 to advance. We're down to two minutes remaining. First priority yellow, second priority red. Third priority blue and fourth priorities with white. And like I said, man, Chris Steele burst onto the scene last year. He was in the race. He felt some of what it was like to be on the podium, get those checks, 
Yellow dropping in. Ryan Porteous pulling up fast and furious, trying to get out in the front of that. Catches the pocket high and tight, out in front of it again. Drop arm turn, second little dip right there, and Ryan Porteous sending full right there in high five fashion, baby. So first priority will now go to blue, second priority goes to red. And I don't know if that's gonna challenge a 7.76, but that was a joy to one watch. Of, one Ryan of the most dynamic Ryan. rides we've seen. Looked like Let's a ping pong ball. Call it out right here on the replay. All right, so here he is jamming down. Gets a little mid-section check there where it gives him enough speed to come around that first section. There he is sitting in the pocket, drives it around again. You can see him just laying against that big greeno fin that he's got. And there on the inside, he was going for another little barrel section as the bottom dropped out. But uh, definitely great navigation and great uh, reading that wave, all the sections. So we're down to 25 seconds remaining. And it results in a 5.60 increasing his score, but not challenging for second place. And that will be your heat right there. And we're red, counting down. Red up and riding. Uh-oh. Time call 10 seconds. Joel Taylor screaming down the line, snapping that one at the top. Tenton Riders counting Getting you down out in, in front. Five. Catching Four, the reform. Three. Snap two, section, airdrop. One. And he can't quite handle the airdrop, but what a great maneuver by Joel Taylor. And that was your heat right there. We'll wait for that score for Joel Taylor, but I'm not sure that that's going to matter. He's still in first place. And Chris Steele and Joel Taylor advance to the prone unassist finals. Yeah, so we're going to have another. Uh, For 60 years, PQSA and Home Care Plus have been there when it mattered. We're the experts in spinal cord injury and deliver quality, safe supports to people living with all disabilities, with more than 5 million care hours provided in the last 10 years alone. We've grown into one of South Australia's largest and most trusted service providers, but we're not done yet. It's time for us to evolve. Join us on our journey as we unveil our new brand. And we are back live. Uh, Danny Salfield here from BFM Community Radio with the great Charles Chucker Webb uh, calling this heat the first semi finals of the Any Knee Kneeling featuring event. Organiser doing double duty as a competitor, Mark Mono Stewart. And uh, who else we got in this heat, Chucker? Uh, we have Ibon Assisi and Josh Bogle in the yellow, and we have Altar Oliveras in the blue. He is from Chile. Josh is from Hawaii. He lives on Maui, very close to Lahaina. And Mr. Ibon is from Biscayne Country. Yeah, so Basque Country, part of Spain. But um, Ibon uh, must be very uh, parochial to the Basque Country. Doesn't want to really necessarily be flying the Spanish flag. He's all about, I'm from the Basque Country. That's where I'm from. All right. Well, I didn't know how to say that. So I obviously butchered it American style. So I apologize. <laughs> That's all good. And just... Uh, <laughs> Really looking forward to uh, seeing the battle of um, Joel Taylor up against uh, uh, Zach, um, Zach, Zach when we get to, uh, Kai, sorry, when we get yeah, to that Kai final Polish, tomorrow. That's going to be a big battle. Yep, yep. Uh, Joel definitely being the local here does not want to uh, <laughs> give doesn't, up. Doesn't want to relinquish. No. But, but there is uh, a, yeah. I think Kai's got a pretty tight hold on that belt in Oop. that world championship, and I don't think he wants to let it go. Ooh, we'll so. see. There's a, lo a lot to look forward to. Um, Got to tell you, Chucker, this has been a really, really exciting week. Um, so much epic rides and epic performances from all our athletes. It's, um, mate, I'm, I'm just chuffed to the gills to be here and uh, be a part of this. Yeah, high level of surfing here on the AASP 
World Championship Tour. Very high level surfing here at Blackmore's Australian Pro Adaptive Surfing Championships at the Pass. Each division having their moments. A lot of the surfers showing their merit on these high level waves. This is what the tour is about, man. We want to give every adaptive surfer the opportunity to perform at the highest level. And the only way you can do that is to put them on the best waves available right. in, the, in the area, in the region. And boy, did Mono nail it. Yeah. Check Same. it out. It's like a, it looks like a Jeffrey's Bay lineup out there at the moment <laughs> with that groomed offshore wind and the, the sets just stacked to the horizon. It's uh, pumping out there, actually. It's, um, we got Joshy Bogle up and riding from Hawaii, up and down on that one. And he will put a score on the board, although it won't offer much, but it will be something to start the heat off with. Josh Bogle, a triple amputee. And he is a big wave charger on Maui. If you've seen Josh Bogle on his IG page or his Facebook, you will see that he is constantly charging, surfing waves double overhead. The guy is fearless. And Joshy's always helping people out. One of the people in the community that has the biggest heart. And if you get a chance on IG, go check out Maya the Cruiser. That is his dog's Instagram page. Maya is his uh, his security dog, and she just is super chill. She she's got her own Instagram page, huh? She's Maya the Cruiser. <laughs> doing all bro. right. She's, she's doing great. But, uh, yeah, Josh, he's one of the pillars of our community and one of the people with the biggest heart you will, you know, that you could find. This is one of the divisions where all the competitors do have their own unique approach and style, depending on uh, what type of ampu amputation they have with their lower limbs. Um, and, yeah, you can really pick out very unique styles. Some are actually surf a bit more sort of back to the wave, like an actual backside um, approach. Some are more sort of straight on, like Mono, more of a traditional kneeboard mono sort of style. Up and, riding, up and riding. Taking off right, doing and a he, nice cut back, staying high and tight on this one, trying to get up in the section. Bap, going vert, snapping that one, not quite able to pull that down. That will probably bit, go as incomplete. Bit excited there, I think, uh, Chucker. Just wanted to get, get going and uh, just been waiting all morning I think to hit that lip he's been uh, been stewing just waiting for that rain to clear and the contest to get going white up and riding up and down not really but uh, mono will take this wave in uh, as far as just a little dipper on his belly he's going to try to reset go up the pass paddle back out it doesn't look like he was real satisfied with that ride but it will put a score on the board it will pr most likely keep him uh, at the top of the leaderboard right here. But uh, a lot more waves on to offer. We have a time check of 19 minutes. Priority being set. We have a time check of 19 minutes, 13 seconds on the clock, waiting for scores for yellow and red. And uh, the conditions wise, um, we've had such a strong current the first few days, but because of this strong offshore chucker, it's sort of negating the current. In fact, it's sort of making it a little bit easier for the service to stay in the lineup. First score for yellow, a 1.67. Yellow, your first score is a 1.67. First score for red, 3.83. First point for, uh, first ride for red, 3.83. Red, you're in first place. Yellow, you're on second place, 18.40 on the clock. Priority, you have to be set for first priority. Yellow in third, red in fourth priority. And I heard you guys mentioning the uh, sort of um, reference to the NASCAR pit crew, and it definitely seems like that. You've got like, you've got like this uh, pit crew waiting for the surfers to uh, get their ride in, and they, they're hustling them onto the wheelchair, back up the beach. Yep. Um, and if you see right there, those two guys right there, with the one with the black hat and the other one just walking, that's Eric Welton from uh, Access Surf. And I thought that was Jim Russell, but it's not. But uh, we want to say thanks to Eric for coming out. You can see he is a competitive adaptive surfer, but today he is a volunteer. He did not enter the event. He just came as a committee member for the ASP. He, he sits on the competition committee for the ASP, white up and riding. Him on. Carving back and uh, waiting for the wave to grow in front of him as he uh, gets up to the lip just a little bit and rides out. Well, not quite ride out. We'll see whether that's a completed ride or not. But getting uh, getting on the board there and um, getting the cobwebs 
out of the system. Well, you have to get a score on the board. That's the thing that really everybody wants to do and get that out of the way. They just want to get that first score on the board. Whether it's a good one or not, you're really hoping it's a good one. But, uh, you know, that one didn't offer too much, but it might move him up past Joshi with the 1.67. We're not sure. We're going to have to check that out. Hey, so tell us, Chuck, a schedule-wise, we started a bit late today at midday, uh, just running um, up until about 3 p.m. this afternoon. Any idea how it will affect the overall sort of schedule for the event? Well, it looks like some of the semis are going to be pushed into tomorrow because of the conditions. Uh, some of the wave ski, the, both the wave ski semis will be pushed to tomorrow. This wind right here, if we were to put wave skis out in this wind, it would be, uh, you know, we'd be down at Main Beach or way out at the rock bout there in about five minutes. Uh, we're just like little sailboats, so um, <laughs> we catch the wind. And so it was really smart of, of the schedulers, of the contest directors, and the head judge Zippy to uh, put the wave ski division tomorrow. So it'll be a longer day tomorrow, but the conditions will be much cleaner as far as the wind. And, you know, we are seeing some really good waves come through, even though the wind's, you know, I don't know, 30 miles an hour. But the conditions are still really nice. The, way, the rain has held off. Uh, this morning when we woke up, it was basically a torrential downpour. Uh, but after that, it kind of lightened up. The wind stayed offshore. So it's offering us these really nice conditions as far as uh, keeping the waves open and barreling and down the line. And, and we're going to see some scores. We already saw, you know, Joel Taylor throw up a 9. We saw Kai Colas throw up an 8.6. So we're seeing some scores in the excellent range. And I'm going to call that out. Last score for White, a 4.0. White, your single wave score of 4.0. You are in first place with priority set at third priority yellow, fourth priority red, first and second priority not set. Wow. Red, you're in second Check place out these with a single wave score of a 3.83. Waves. Yellow, you're in third place with a single wave score of a 1.67. 1520 on the clock. As we look at the screen, Chucker, and those lines just stacked to the horizon, it's uh, enough to get your mouth salivating just looking at all those waves. Well, if you can find yourself in the right spot, you can see these rights on the camera. They're just reeling through. And if you can find yourself in the right spot, you're going to catch a wave that's going to, you know, could possibly be the best ride of the contest right now. So. so Plenty of waves to choose from, but picking the right wave is uh, probably the, um, the go out there because uh, some of the waves sort of have a bit of a closeout section so I guess it's identifying which waves are going to allow them to ride all the way across the the sandbank because um, some do give you the opportunity we saw Joel Taylor get a really long wave earlier on and um, yeah just trying to choose the right wave out there some of them have a bit of a double up section that sees the wave grow as it sort of rolls down the line and offers up the potential for uh, pulling into the the barrel very tricky sections here it's very tricky. We got a priority change, so let me call that out to the surfers. Priority change situation. First priority white. Second As we see Ibon riding, red. cutting back. This is a uh, good-looking wave. It looks like it is going to double up, as I was sort of mentioning before. Ibon uh, looking for a closing turn, just a little bit late to that section, but he did get a nice cutback at the start of that wave, which now, we might have a look. I'm not sure that going back to your belly keeps the same score. I don't know how the judges mm, judge that. Good point. Staying uh, on his knees is important to keep the score up top. He challenges that with a nice little cutty back. Right into the section, another little cutty. Now yeah. here's where he drops back to his belly to stay, and then I have a feeling the judges still score that last maneuver, but I'm I'm just guessing. I don't. I uh, I think you're right though. In a in I a, know in uh, regular surfing, yeah. And once you're on your belly, surfing, you go back onto your belly. It does affect the score. As it's adaptive, maybe you are allowed a little bit more leeway with that. I don't know about that. I have never seen that in the in the uh, judging criteria. But we, we uh, could ask Zippy Pierce and uh, our head judge. He uh, might be able to. We could we could get it. a we could definitely get a head judge ruling on that for sure. But I might I probably will reflect in the score, and we have a it does. Of priority, okay, it we like. do. Also, let me call that score. Last ride for White was 3.67. White, you're in first place with a combined score of a 7.67. Red, you're in second place with a single wave score of a 3.83. Yellow, you're in third place with a single wave score of a 1.67. Priority change. First priority, yellow. Second priority, red. Third priority, white. 12.30 on the clock, boys. 12 minutes, 30 seconds on the clock.
Uh, what do we have a surfer in blue? I seem to remember from earlier in the competition yep. that Altair Oliveira. He's around. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. I I haven't seen him out there. I don't know. He could be getting. I think you know, was... like pretty much everybody. I think has had the joy of getting washed down the beach at Byron Bay's during the contest. So myself included, I got to ride the escalator ride down to almost main beach, I think. So uh, during the contest, but uh, it looks like the wind is kind of negating the current to a certain degree where these guys don't have to go all the yeah, way up can, to the path. You can see the three of our surfers there all just sitting in a bit of a huddle there in the uh, competition zone. And it doesn't look like they're struggling too much with the current, just waiting for the waves. So um, priority will come into play here, it looks like, with uh, Yellow with first priority deciding to take the wave. Josh Bogle from Hawaii. And uh, he's styling across this Shashi. section, catching a rail. and But that wave was looking really good up until that point where he sort of caught the rail there. Joshy will put a second score on the board. Oh, Mono, Mono with a 3-0. He yeah. loves it. He loves the 3-0. Well, he needs to uh, settle down with the 360, that, boys. It's a risky maneuver because he can lose a lot of speed as he come out of that 360. Um, so he's risking losing the speed with that, but he loves it. He loves a good right. spin-up. White, you are our first priority. White, you are our first priority. As we see White up and riding and uh, looking to hit that lip. May have Go got some work done at the start of that wave. We'll just check out the replay. Waiting for scores on yellow, white, and red. Priority change, red, you are in first priority. Yellow, you are in second priority. White, you are in third priority. 10.38 on the clock. So this is our first semi-final. Two, the top two surfers in this heat will go into the final tomorrow. Red, your second score at 2.07. Red, you're in second place with a 5.90. You need a 3.85 to move into first place. As we see Ibon flying down the line, getting a beautiful section here, Chaka. And look at this, he's lining it up. This is a nice long ride from Ibon and uh, comes off the back there, but uh, some super good flow through that wave. He was he was reading that wave really well through that inside section and uh, a nice long ride with a with a, with a couple of um, flowing manoeuvres. Here, give us a call here, Chucker. Yep, he takes off on the whitewash, gets up, sets up right here, sees it going down the line, catches his speed right here, challenges the top of the wave right there with a little check snap. Another one right here, keeping high and tight in the pocket. Another high line right there and tries to put an exclamation point but just chooses to cut out the back. That will be a decent score and it might be the top score of his of his heat. It might outdo that 4.0 that he's got. He so we'll check. to uh, paddle back out rather than doing the, uh, the run around or the wheel around in the chair. And um, yeah, just due to the, that current not being as strong today, the surfers can uh, make it back out the back without catching the chair ride. White, your fourth wave score is a 5.83. White, you increase your lead to a 9.83 combined score. White, you are in third priority. Red, you are in first priority with a combined score of a 5.90. Red, you're in second place. Yellow, you have a combined score of a 4.50. You are in third place. Priority, red, first priority. Second priority, yellow. Third priority, white, eight. 45 on the clock. Yeah, I actually have a feeling, uh, Chucker, that we do have only a three-man heat, um, as doesn't look like the priority judge has a fourth colour there. Nope. Um, so it is just Ibon, Mono and Josh going at it in a uh, pretty tight contest, actually. So Mono doesn't, um, you know, won't have, a, have it all his own way in this. He's got to really... Uh, got to keep his head screwed on if he wants to get through to the final, which I'm sure is something that he is... Def most definitely determined to do in his pet event here, his baby. Well, uh, you know, the heat schedule, they did put them out there. So you, you're, you're seeing that there's no favoritism in the building of this event because you're seeing the event coordinator, the event builder out in these conditions, you know, having to surf the same difficult, tough uh, conditions that everybody else has to surf. So uh, big ups to Mono for just, you know, making sure that there's no favoritism in this platform, that there's no favoritism in the contest. Uh, we're, we're putting out the, the best heats that we can at the time that we can, and we're keeping it safe. We're keeping the assisted divisions. I think maybe there is an assist division after this, maybe sometime today, 
but uh, the wave ski division and a few of the other assisted divisions will be tomorrow when the conditions are a little bit cleaner. Yeah, I think the uh, main problem earlier was the uh, visibility due to the rain squalls. Would have been very difficult for the judges to uh, to see the riders. The waves have been pretty good all day, but yeah, that visibility was not going to be very uh, easy earlier on. But things are looking good now. The wind is quite squally and strong, but. That's actually helping uh, the guys uh, make it across some of these really fast waves, keeping the wave face open for them to perform manoeuvres. Well, Mono is in first priority, so you can bet that he is, and you can see little paddle battle right He's there. Tailing it's, Ibon uh, up the point. He says, Ibon, I don't like you, uh, well, you know, like outperforming me, so uh, you, can, oh, yeah. you can sure bet Mono's going to put a stamp on this heat one way or another. I think they can, yeah, see some waves coming out the back there that they're uh, paddling. They want to get right to that outside takeoff zone to get that uh, extra length of ride. 6.20 on the clock. Red, you are in first priority. All right, well, as we wait to see... Uh, Look like maybe Joshy caught a wave. Joshy's down the beach uh, a little ways, caught a wave. They called him up. And so we might see another score from Josh, but I don't think it's going to factor in as it looked like he just went quick up and down. We didn't catch it on the screen. Yeah, Josh will be looking at that second place there. Uh, Mono's got a pretty strong lead, but... Uh, oh, no, sorry. Uh, apologies. Um, it's Ebon in, in the lead there. So Mono is, is not safe in this heat. He's um, not, and let me call this out. Yellow, your third wave score is a five point, uh, excuse me, 2.53. A 2.53, you got a combined score of a 5.36. As we see, Ibon coming around the section and looking for the barrel there, but uh, that wave just getting a bit fast, probably won't factor into his top two. Um, so nervous times here for Mono, um, with Josh only looking for a, uh, a, a, a three. 3.08 to move up, to knock the man, the myth, the legend, Mono, at his home break. This that is would be devastating nervous. right now. This is now. nervous moments that here. That would um, be devastating. So I'm thinking Mono's got first priority, and he's gonna. He's looking at us out here. Five minutes on the clock. Red, you have first priority. Red, you need a six to move into first place. You have a combined score of a 5.90. White, you are in second priority. You have a combined score of a 9.83. You are in first place. Your last wave of white was a 2.07, will not factor into your wave scores. Yellow, you are in third priority with a combined score of a 5.36. Yellow, you need a 3.08 to move into second place. We have four minutes, 26 on the clock. As we see Mono taking off on a wave. Go. Here he goes. He's Up pulling into the barrel. Is he going to oh, come out? He comes Mono out. comes out. Of course he does. Snap at the end, Mark if he can hold Mono it together. Stewart. He's gonna get a score for that. That might challenge the first place wave. What a great uh, ride I for Mono. I think that was the best tube ride we've seen all event, Chaka. What a great ride for Mono. He's feeling it right now. He knew that he needed a score to move up into first place. Even though he would advance in second place, Joshy nipping on his heels. Uh, look. Waiting for a score for Red. Red, your last score of 7.17. Red, you move into first place with a combined score of... All nine. right, let's uh, look at this replay here as we see Mono eyeing down the line, taking off and just pulling straight into that section and uh, coming out of the white water. And that'll do me, he says, I am done with that wave. I've made the final. I'm happy. As we see Ibon. White, you are in first priority. With 3.20 on the clock, boys, 3.20 on the clock. Red, you are in first place with a combined score of an 11. White, you are in second place with a combined score of a 9.83. White, you're in first priority. And as we see Ibon pulling into the barrel as well, and score of not quite coming out cleanly. Six. Yellow, you need a score of a seven to move from third to second to advance. We have two, three minutes on the clock, boys. Three minutes on the clock. So do we know where uh, Josh is in the lineup? I'm interested to see this because he, he needs a seven. Josh, he got washed down a little ways. He's down towards Main Beach a little bit. Okay, or... well, that might uh, make it difficult for Josh to get that required seven. 
Um, but it's this has been an exciting heat to call, Chucko. We've seen some great rides, and here's Ibon up again. Um, I knew there'd be barrels in this event, and we're starting to see some some tube rides. Look at this one on the inside. He is pulling in and uh, catches a rail, but that way really hollowed out there. Opened up for him, gave him the same opportunity almost that Mono had. It looked very similar how they entered the barrel and Mono holding his line, having a lot more familiarity with the break, offers him the opportunity to come out and Ebon not able to complete that ride, but he will get a score nonetheless. Yeah, that, that barrel from- Right, your last score was a 3.57. It will not factor into your score line. And there is 150 on the clock. White, you are in second place with a 9.83. Red in first place with a combined score of an 11. Yellow, you are in third place with a combined score of a 5.36. Yellow, you need a seven to advance. We have one minute 30 on the clock. One minute 30 on the clock. Yeah, that uh, last wave of Ibo on that really, uh really hollowed out though that last section um if he had a rode out of that cleanly i think that would have been a pretty excellent score yeah it's uh looks like mono just needs three waves to to make his mark here so uh he knew and he it looks like he's just going to call it a day yeah at, uh, mono's come in and uh, he'll be waiting one for one minute on the clock boys one minute on the clock white you are in first priority you have a combined score of a 9.83 you need a 5.18 to move into first place Counting down 56 seconds on the clock. Well, uh, I think we might hear um, from Mono in a, in a few minutes' time with Mayor Armitage and see how stressed he was about the end of that heat and uh, how that how it felt to get that barrel. So looking forward to hearing from Mono. Counting down 30 seconds on the clock. 30 seconds on the clock. No priority set in the water. So we got another heat coming up after this. Is it the same division or are we switching to another division? What's on the schedule? If we can, uh, it's hard to see there, isn't it? Uh, yep, back into uh, the semi-final two Down next. Down. 10. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And Mark Mono Stewart pulling that one out Good with health the changes everything. So don't accept age as a limit or a bad night's sleep. Feel strong inside and out. Keep learning new moves. And if you want to stop, stop. Good health changes everything. Blackmores, 90 years of natural health expertise. For 60 years, PQSA and Home Care Plus have been there when it mattered. We're the experts in spinal cord injury and deliver quality, safe supports to people living with all disabilities, with more than 5 million care hours provided in the last 10 years alone. We've grown into one of South Australia's largest and most trusted service providers, but we're not done yet. It's time for us to evolve. Join us on our journey as we unveil our new brand. Active Advice. It's the foundation on which Insurance Advisornet is built and it has seen us become one of Australia's leading general insurance broker networks by providing sound, active advice, personalised service and the right solutions for every client. It's a responsibility we've never lost sight of and we never will. For your local advisor, search Insurance Advice in it today. And, uh, yeah, we're back for semi-final heat two of the Any Near Kneeling Division here at the uh, Blackmore's Byron Bay Adaptive Pro, the inaugural event, 2024, four years in the making. I'm here with Charles Chucker Webb, and uh, we're still sort of de-stressing after that last heat. Mark Mono-Stewart, uh, very tight heat, 
Go that Everybody beautiful cheering tube. for Mono coming up the beach. Yeah, well, everyone's cheering for everyone. It's that type of event. The whole community here is just behind everyone. Everyone's chipping in, helping out in all different ways. But it is a competition, as we see, up oh. and riding. That was interesting. Uh, okay, let's see if we have any kind of interference there. So Llewellyn, we're going to have a flurry of exchanges right here. We got yellow taken off on the inside. We got blue and it looked like red dog Wheatley on the outside. We don't know if that might have been an interference situation. We're going to find out. Well, it was but no uh, we're going to... Well, I don't I was, know. It I was just going to say, there's no priority at the start of the heat, is there? So. Right, but if you are impeding somebody else's uh, ability to catch a wave, that might be an interference. Not sure how that works. Yeah, I guess it's whether the judges determined that the scoring potential was affected by who was on the inside Red there. As we dog. See Red dog. Cutting back, giving it the stomp. He knows this break, and there we go again on the belly. He's trying to get a reform. He's just trying to get a score on the board. Redirect. That one's not going to offer much, but it will get him a score on the board. So we'll see how that all shakes out real quick. Terry. Waiting on scores for red and yellow. Waiting on scores for red and oh. yellow. And look at Mark Mono Stewart on the beach. Congratulations, Mono. You have made the final of the Australian Pro Adaptive Surfing Championships. Llewellyn Sponge Williams taken off. Yeah, great ride actually by uh, Llewellyn. Llewellyn. Llewellyn, but we can just call him Sponge. Call him Sponge. I'm not very just good at rolling, rolling my L's no, for the Welsh. No, it's, uh, it's Welshies, man. The Welshies uh, got that uh, rolling tongue thing going on. But I uh, watch this replay here, Chucker, of Sponge. as we. Uh, this is the oh, this is, incident. Okay, so this is looks like we Red Dog knew cut to cut out. So yeah. he gave way. Spongy getting a nice snap right there, doing another nice snap right there. So Sponge with a couple of really nice maneuvers, waiting on scores. Wait scores for red, yellow, and blue. Ooh. But a really nice ride coming up here. Uh, priority, first priority white, second priority red. As you look at this wave from uh, beautiful cutback here from Sponge, this wave I was really impressed by. Two really nice cutback turns and then into the power section of the wave and uh, the wave shuts down but he keeps riding through. Sponge and, is going to uh, have a couple nice scores on the that, board. That looks like a very decent score as we see Michael Foddy up and riding looking for the double up section here and uh, just decides oh. to try to straighten out but catches a rail that there. One. That one was rough. There's a little bit of peril involved in the conditions today with this tide running out now and the uh, section's very steep. And Red Dog's up down the beach. Red Dog just trying to get up and make it happen. He's just taking off on everything. And, of course, Red Dog from Australia. This will be his first time joining us on the tour. A flurry of action. We should try and find out if there was any interference there from the judges, but I suppose that would come up on our It would. It would screen. show up as a, as a triangle, as a red triangle, so we'll look for that in the score line. I don't think it will be an interference because Red Dog did see blue coming around the corner, white up and riding. Masa. Masafumi Kobayashi. Is he going to get back on the way? Japan. No. Couldn't quite make that one work. No, no, no. He will get a score, so this will be the judges are very busy. There's going to be a bunch of scores on the board. Two for Llewellyn, one for Kobayashi, Masafumi Kobayashi. Uh, looks like maybe two scores for Red Dog and maybe one or two scores for Blue. As Forrest in the background you can hear him yelling getting pumped up the man below knee stand is next and that will feature your current aasp world champ forrest whitaker and it will also feature kinjiro ito from japan who was challenging for the world championship uh kinjiro throwing up the nines we got masa just taking something small, just trying to double up that small scores. That, and we're still waiting for all of these scores to come up. Yeah, uh, we have busy not, uh, in the judging booth yeah, right now trying to at digest that. There's uh, a whole bunch of scores. We have first priority white. With time on the clock, 19 minutes, we are still waiting for numerous scores. Two scores for yellow, two scores for red, one score for white, and two scores for blue. Come here. Come here. A good time to do the interview soon while they're all rushing around. Yellow. First priority, yellow. 1844 on the clock. As uh, competitors are going to be doing the, the uh, wheel around, we can see Michael Foddy there um, with his team getting pushed back up the point. 
And it almost becomes a bit of a, yeah, like a NASCAR race on the beach <laughs> to get back up the point. And this is very similar to what we do at the U.S. Open. Uh, not as far because we don't have to run as far. The beach isn't that as long. But we do have our be watch our, our uh, water safety and our beach crew running people up and down the beach like this. So this is kind of the standard set by the U.S. Open and the, the Hawaii Adaptive Surfing Championships, kind of a mix of both of them. And kind of in Hawaii, you don't really need to run up and down the beach. Everything is kind of in a lagoon set style, but there's jet skis out in the water and there's crews out in the, out in the channel making sure everybody's safe. But at the U.S. Open, it's a beach break and you get washed down the beach and the current's very tight. And uh, sometimes you uh, have to uh, do some stuff like that. As we uh, saw on our screen there, a couple of legends, Mark Mono Stewart, Pauline Mensa. Um, Mia was going to do a remote one with uh, Mono. Okay. Uh, not in here, but just like... Yeah, we've got the roving mic for that. Masa Fumi going up the beach. Masa, one of the great competitors here. We got scores, let me call them out. Yellow, your first wave score was a 4.0. Your second wave score was a 7.17. Yellow, you are in first place with a combined score of an 11.17. You have first priority. Red Dog, Red, you are in second place. Your first wave score was a 3.17. Your second wave score a 4.40. Your third wave score a 2.0 will not factor in. Your combined score a 7.57. Masafumi Kobayashi, you white, you have a two wave score of a 6.53 your first wave score was a 4.03 your second wave score was a 2.50 blue you are in fourth place with a combined score of a 5.90 your first wave score a 2.33 your second wave score a 3.57 16.15 on the clock boys yellow in first priority all right a lot to get through there and it is one of those uh, heats at the moment chucker that could go either way all four surfers have got a couple of scores on the board with uh sponge with a high seven but it um it's there's so many waves out there so many opportunities it's really a matter of of, of getting back out to the point um and uh getting another ride for these guys so there's um there's really a whole bunch of things that can happen in the last 15 minutes of the heat we we really don't know who's going to come out on top in this one. Well, I will tell you this. Sponge has been chasing Mono for years. He's caught him a couple times at a few events. I believe he won the ISA uh, Parasurfing Amateur World Championship last year. Uh, caught Mono uh, at, one, at that event. And Mono has won the U.S. Open Adaptive Surfing Championships Every time he's entered it, he's entered the event five times, and he's won it five he's times. That one on lockdown, yeah, and I, I, I'm he's... sure he's hoping this event will become uh, the same story for him that he can take this home event out. Yeah, but he's, um, he's got to get it, got to get it done. And uh, so far, he's looking good into the finals tomorrow. Well, we've got 15 minutes on the clock with Sponge in first place, and you can tell that Sponge is frothing at the mouth right now. He's putting up some decent scores. He's always hunting down waves. And one thing about Sponge, man, is he does not sit still on the peak. He moves around. He finds waves wherever they are. He chases them down. And that's that's his deal, man. Sponge is, is uh, you know, really relentless. He surfs this really crazy left-hand break in wells. And it's really a lot of wind. So I think this conditions right here kind of favor Sponge because this is the kind of stuff that, that he surfs back home in Wales at, at his home break. Where does, he, uh, where does the name Sponge come from, do we know? Well, I don't know. Is it maybe the type it's because of board he, that he likes? He absorbs. Oh, they he called him SpongeBob when he was Sponge a kid. Bob. Okay, yeah. I thought it might. I thought it was because he just absorbed all the knowledge <laughs> that was around him, and he absorbed it like a sponge. But or I he guess favored not. riding a sponge-type board, maybe. I thought uh, lots of different materials he can utilize in your equipment these days, from uh, soft tops to PU material to epoxy. Um, you can do whatever you like as we see the man himself sponge up and riding on another wave and he is flying down the line on this one Snap. and a big off the top is he gonna ride out not quite but that he, he's carrying a lot of speed um be interesting to find out what he is 
riding because uh, he he seemed to be moving very fast down the line on that. Well, one. like I said, Spongy's uh, he's trying to chase down Mono. He's he's definitely a fearless competitor, and he's not scared to challenge sections of the wave that are going to bring in those high scores. He's watched Mono do that time and time again. Yellow, your third wave scores are three point one seven. It will not factor into your wave. Scores of combined 4.0 and a 7.17 for a combined score of an 11.17. Blue is in first priority, red second priority, white in uh, third priority, yellow you are in fourth priority, 12.50 on the clock. Red you have a combined score of a 7.57, white you have a combined score of a 6.53. White, you need a 3.55 to move into second place to advance. Blue, you are in fourth place with a combined score of a 5.90. Blue, you need a 4.01 to move into second place to advance. 12.25 on the clock. We're down here at the uh, Blackmores Australia Adaptive Pro Byron Bay for the very first event of the uh, Vision Ocean Side World Tour. And it is off to a great start for the year for these adaptive surfers with conditions today challenging, but some very nice rides. As we see a paddle from red, we have a situation there. Pri a priority situation. Hey, Blue using his... Hey, um, yeah. Don't do it there. Blue using his priority there over red. Please, down the beach. So uh, we saw a blue taking off there in front of um, of red, but blue did hold. Blue did have priority, so it was blues right away, and red dog Wheatley needed to make way for him. So we are going to most likely see a paddle interference right there, which would take red's half of his top score away, and that will definitely inhibit his ability to win this. To win this, so let's see how the judges played that out. Actually, I. So, so who had priority on that wave? I thought blue it was... had first priority, and uh, oh, and blue and blue used the priority by taking off in front of Correct. red. Correct. But did red uh, get in his way? Is the question? If you impede the opportunity of the other surfer with priority to score on the wave, it will be called okay. a priority. Okay. And here comes red down the beach, saying, "You know what? I got to make up for that." Pulling into a closeout, he got a little bit of that going. Okay, and uh, we are going to cut to uh, Joel Taylor, the winner of that last heat, and on, on the way to the finals tomorrow with Mia Armitage. Joel Taylor, it's been 20 years that you've had a break from the surf, but you're making up for lost time, that's for sure. Those scores, more than nine, more than seven. Yeah. How is it out there? Because you're the first one that we'll be speaking to today about the surf, and it's dramatically different from yesterday. Yeah, yeah, it's um, a bit wild, the wind and wind and a little bit of rain, but, yeah, it's pretty good. It's nice and consistent, and, um, yeah, priority it seems to be getting better. First priority, white. Second priority, yellow. Third priority blue, fourth priority red. Yellow, you're in first place with a combined score of an 11.17. Red, you're in second place with a combined score of an 8.253. <laughs> blue, you're in third place with a combined score of a 6.50. You need a 2.97 to advance. Red, you are in third place with an... A, a paddle infraction, and you have a combined score of a 4.40. Time on the clock, 9.30 on the clock. Really important for everyone to hear loud and clear so how they're going the out there. And is that what it's like for you? You're really determined to... priority interference. <laughs> with the priority interference. Yeah, yeah, all those crucial notes. Or are you just focused on the moment? Because yesterday, that's what Jose Martinez was saying. Yeah, yeah, you definitely need to hear what's going on out there, especially when the wind's so strong. Um, yeah, I like to like to get a wave right, right at the last second if I can, so the countdown's perfect as well, yeah. You used to be a body bodyboarder, yep. yeah, and then when you came back, you took to the surf. What's the change been like for you? Uh, it came pretty naturally, like once I found a board that works for me, um, 
sort of yeah just came back pretty naturally which is which was a surprise like I thought it would take quite a while to um, yeah get to used to a harder board and a board that doesn't flex but yeah I've, I found one that works for me and yeah really enjoying it and it must do, it must be just such a whirlwind for you as well to take up a new hobby essentially and it's and you've just taken to it like a duck to water as they say uh, now you've won all these titles you and your family get to get, uh, go all around the world we had a conversation with young Kai because of the Collis yesterday similar story in fact he's been surfing around about as long as you just let us know a bit about what that's like to have such a huge change in your life after already having gone through so much yeah yeah it's um it's pretty wild to have a second chance at doing something that I love and um I'm not letting that opportunity slip I'm taking it pretty seriously and um I compete to win I surf for fun but I compete to win so I'm here to win and um yeah that's what I plan on doing tomorrow hopefully Kai's the one Kai's the one to beat he's he's the AASP world champion so um yeah he's coming after him yeah, the upstart from Palm Beach. Yeah, the grommet. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Joel F. and Taylor. I, I hear that you... Yeah, that's your, little, your nickname. Yeah, from when I was a kid. <laughs> Pretty funny. Yeah. All right. Well, best of luck also for the Olympics. I'll bet you're busting to find out about that oh, one. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's one of the reasons why I took up para surfing once I heard um, there's a potentially be in the Paralympics. So, yeah, fingers crossed for the Season announcement priority. soon. First priority. Wait, All right, second great. priority Shut red. there with Mia and Joel. And, uh, blue. Yeah, oh, blue. Sorry stuff. about that. Second priority blue. All right, we are back to... I uh, think we better let Joel action. F and Taylor get going anyway. It's a bit gnarly down on the beach today. Legend, thanks for, thanks for the chat. Cheers. Okay, so uh, just an update for everybody watching. There was a priority situation there. So Red Dog has lost uh, half of his... Nope, nope, nope. It's, uh, it's a priority interference. Your priority interference takes your second wave score completely okay. out. Okay. So Red Dog will be living on a one wave score here. His highest wave score is a 4.0, and he will have to live on that and he is, he get uh, the best scores that he can. Sponge, Sponge taking into off the straight into the barrel. That was sick. And is and he, he going to finish it. off? Nope, that was, a, that was a replay. Catching up on a couple of waves uh, from during that interview, and that was a beautiful wave by Sponge, who's really got a read on the lineup now, and he's going to be challenging Mono in tomorrow's final, it looks like, um, as he has a pretty solid pretty solid lead in this heat but uh Mazza's not too far away in second and uh Michael Foddy will be looking to progress as well just needs a a three it looks wow, like wow look at the stacks coming in look at this yeah the swell is this, due to um oh pick up this afternoon as well Chucker the predictions are for the swell to keep rising Red so Dog Wheatley going down the beach we are um going to be seeing waves all afternoon as we head into um a few more heats and Michael Foddy this is an important wave for him he needs to get in the three range and he's cutting back there. Um, I'm not sure if he got any work done early, further up the point. I'm not sure that's going to offer him a 2.93. It very well could for the change of direction. But if he would have completed that maneuver, you most definitely would have seen something in the high two to three range. Uh, I'm not sure what that's going to offer him, though. Masafumi Kobayashi trying to Let's take uh, off on have that Have a one. look here and see if he got anything done out the back. Um, the wave starts little, off a bit slow. little check turn right there and then... He just changed yeah, direction. I'm not and just, a... I don't. I don't see anything that's going to offer that big of a score right there. But you never know. Massa. Maybe the judges see something different than we do, uh, and we have a change in priority. Priority change. Yellow, you are in first priority. White, you have second priority. And scores on the board. Yellow, you are in first place with a combined score of an 11.17. White, you have moved into second place with a combined score of a 6.53 with a second wave score of a 2.50. Blue, you are in third place with a combined score of a 6.50. Blue, you need a 2.97 to move into second place. Red Dog Wheatley, you have a combined score of a 4.40. You are suffering from a priority interference. Time on the clock. 
3.40 to go. Time on the clock, 3.40 with yellow in priority. Yeah, so um, it is still possible for Red Dog when he gets out the back to make the heat. He needs just to get a, uh, a 6.55, 6 yeah. which is doable um, in these conditions. So the difference between a paddle priority and a, uh, in a uh, priority interference. So priority interference and a paddle interference. Paddle interference, the half of your top wave goes and a priority interference, your entire second score goes. So uh, a priority of interference is obviously the worst of the two uh, because it takes away the ability to get a second score. So you're just living on one score. Uh, that is a tough break for, for Red Dog. Who um, should be back out in the lineup pretty soon. I need to see that flag. Do you have to back up just a little bit more? As we see the uh, pulled out view of the lineup there, you can see there's plenty of waves coming through. So we'll see where Red Dog is and if he's in the lineup because he's got three minutes to get a 6.5. So he's going to need a special kind of wave to do that, but it is certainly possible. So uh, Well, we see a 7.17 on the board, so we know it's possible. We've already seen a few really excellent scores, 8.6s, things like that. So uh, Kai Colas put a huge score on the board. Uh, Joel Taylor put a huge score on the board. Uh, it's not, uh, it's uh, not, uh, you know, Red Dog is a great surfer. He's local here to Australia. So we uh, think that Red Dog can make that happen. We can see Red Dog uh, looks like he was paddling for that wave. And uh, he may lose his second priority there. Priority yellow. First priority yellow. Red, you have second priority. As we see, Sponge up and riding on a set wave here, cutting back, smoking his way through the inside, looking for this reform and uh, looking to improve on a four, which I think he's done on that wave. Putting he definitely himself. will improve on that four. You can tell the change of direction. Uh, th there's nobody that puts in more work on surfing, practicing, traveling than uh, Llewellyn Sponge Williams. The guy has showed up for every event for the last five years. He's put in so much work, so much time, so much effort, and he supports the AASP, he supports the ISA. He's at every single event that he can make. And uh, if you've seen... Red, you need a 6.53 to advance. Red, you need a 6.53 to advance. You have first priority, time check, one minute, five seconds on the clock. And Sponge, your last ride matches the 7.17. <laughs> so you have a combined score of a 14.37 in first place. Yeah, look at that, two 717s. Time on the clock. 45 seconds, ticking down red. You have first priority. You need a 6.53 to advance. White in second place with a 6.53. Uh, Blue, you are in third place with a 6.50. 30 seconds on the clock. Blue, you need a 2.93 to advance. Blue's in. Well, so uh, it looks like it's Red Dog out there on his own, basically, looking for that. Red, you Score. need a 6.53, ticking down, 10 seconds on the clock. There is a wave coming out there. Is Red Dog going to get it? Here Five, we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Congratulations, Sponge, Williams, and Masa Komarashi. They're going to both advance. Everything. So don't accept age as a limit or a bad night's sleep. Feel strong inside and out. Keep learning new moves. And if you want to stop, stop. Good health changes everything. Blackmores, 90 years of natural health expertise. For 60 years, PQSA and Home Care Plus have been there when it mattered. We're the experts in spinal cord injury and deliver quality, safe supports to people living with all disabilities, with more than 5 million care hours provided in the last 10 years alone. We've grown into one of South Australia's largest and most trusted service providers, but we're not done yet. It's time for us to evolve. Join us on our journey as we unveil our new brand.
Active Advice. It's the foundation on which insurance Advisenet is built and it has seen us become one of Australia's leading general insurance broker networks by providing sound, active advice, personalised service and the right solutions for every client. It's a responsibility we've never lost sight of and we never will. For your local advisor, search Insurance Advice in it today. Welcome back, and this is day four of competition for our 2024 Blackmore's Australian Adaptive Pro here in beautiful Byron Bay. Ben Way here with Charles Chaka Webb, Mr. Stoke for Life, and we are uh, we're pretty much stoked for life today with all of these conditions. And a couple people who are stoked for life are Sponge and Masa, who Masa. are pushing on through. Making it to the final. So happy for Masa. There's another guy that puts in the work, travels, does all the events, supports all the adaptive surfing platforms. Super stoked for Masa. We knew Sponge is, you know, Sponge is kind of one of those regular suspects that kind of always shows up. And super stoked for Sponge. And we also have Mark Mono Stewart in that final. All right, so we're waiting for an opening wave as we see blue Andrew Garlic going for a takeoff there. And yellow, Forrest Weinberg up behind him. Up and screaming through this inside here. Good catch, good catch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, we're going to have to wait for some scores on the Neal division. We know that Sponge and Mono are going to make it. It, uh, it was a round robin, so I thought that that was the last semifinal, but that was the second heat of a round robin. So they have to add up those two scores, uh, top two scores from those two, uh, two first heats of the round robin. So uh, and here we Kenjiro. go, Red, Kenji to Ito. You can see how the offshore is really kind of pushing these guys over the back. They're having to take two or three extra paddles to try and get down the face. And yeah, the whole round robin thing's got me mixed up. I'm, I'm <laughs> gonna just let them tell me what's going on over yeah, here. Yeah, I kind of jumped I'm the used, gun on I'm that. I'm used to an elimination format. Yep, I kind of jumped the gun on that, but uh, it does look like for sure we got Mono and Sponge in the finals, no doubt about that. Time called 21 minutes. Yellow's first wave, 1.67. Blue's first, 0.83. And Red's first is a 0 0.73. So we'll have to wait to see who the third and fourth seed are in the finals for the Neal Division. I do apologize for jumping the gun on that. Thought it was a semi-final setup, but we only have uh, those eight surfers in there, and it was a double round robin. So we'll check that out. And But we do want to congratulate Sponge and Mono so far. Yeah, and so uh, in our earlier heats, we had the uh, lower profile surfers. We had Prone and Neil that are kind of uh, underneath the wind. And now that we're getting into our stand divisions, got a little more aerodynamics in play. As you can see, you've got this kind of break against them, trying to impede their forward motion on the waves, as well as trying to get down the face and take off. You can see that these boards are kind of getting pushed back out the back. So. A lot of effort to get into the wave. Once you do, it's a perfect reeling machine wave, as you can see on our screen. Back-to-back -back lines all the way out to sea here in beautiful Byron Bay. And we've had such an amazing time here since day one of competition. We're now on day four. Right. 19 minutes and 30 seconds. Been nothing short of spectacular here in Byron Bay. The surf, the setup, the hospitality, the people, everything that's Live been action. going on. Forrest Weinberg driving off that one and gets a solid connection with the lip. So he's going to bump up his score line. His first wave came in as a 1.67 as that was one solid maneuver on that wave. And we'll see what the judges reward him. As White out the back, 
Jake Matthews connecting with this one. Draws it back, hanging with the pocket. And you can see how much that wind is Oof. trying to push back against them, but he did a great job of navigating through the scorable areas on that wave. Looked like one of his foot slipped off, maybe the back foot slipped off, not sure. We'll check the replay on that. This is the replay of Forest Wave, man. Oh, a little snap. Two pumps, never goes to the bottom of the wave, just, start, just bottom turns mid-face. And he gets a four for that. Yellow's second wave, 4.0. Yellow's in the lead with a 4.0 and a 1.67. Yeah, it looked like he just dug rail and his foot just slipped off. White with a little head dip right there. Love that. So we got Jake Matthews with a little head dipper. We haven't seen too many, uh, I mean, it it was basically his torso and his head that were more of a shower, but still, he's under it, in it, and cleared it and, and got that's, out of there. That's why they call it a head dip and not a barrel. <laughs> so here we go. Let's see. Nice little snap cut back right there, and he gets the little head dip. Beautiful setup for that, too. He's he gotten, just placed himself right up and under it. It's got a little head shower there, a little rinse. Yeah, it looked better on the replay than it did live action. He threw, even. snapping it. Very fluent, just effortless for him to challenge the top of that wave. So Kinji will get a nice little score for that, and it will top his 0 0.73 for sure, and it might jump him up there into the score line. Yeah, and so um, you can see you can see on the first attempt for uh, Kenji, though, he's riding that um, kind of pop-out epoxy construction, ultra, ultra lightweight board. And when you have this offshore wind in these windy conditions, it just turns into a little sail that wants to go out the back of the wave. So it's pretty hard to come down into the, get down the face. It, it is very hard to get what down What are you giggling face. at me about? Did I say something bad? No, I'm sorry, but Mia just tried to walk under the tent right there, and she just bumped into that line right there and just knocked herself down. So, so I'm sorry. I told... Uh, <laughs> I was asking Kenji though about his board, and I'd been s singing the praises of who uh, the distributors of those boards in uh, Japan and everything else. Turns out he had to buy his board, so I take it all back. Those guys better start giving up some free equipment. Nice. Murasaki Sports and Koji Love Surf Nishi. You got a hot rider out there on your boards. You better give them some free stuff. It looks like there's a change in uh, situation. Uh, Jake Matthews scores a 4.50 to move Master into first White, place. 4.50 change in situation. White goes to the lead with a 4.50 and a 2.93. First priority blue, second priority yellow, third priority is with red. Second is now yellow with a 4.0 and 1.67. And Kenji Ito, second wave, 3.47 and 0 0.73. Hmm, Kenji up and down. He was up and down. I'm going to give him that score once again. Kenji Ito, previous wave, 3.47. First wave, 0 0.73. Now waiting on your third score. And Andrew Golic has a 0 0.83 with just under 16 minutes. Kenjiro with that up and down scores a half a point. We got yellow up and riding. Forrest Weinberg, nice cutback, tries to stay with it, can't quite do it. Forrest, your current AASP world champ, trying to make sure that he makes it into the final here in semifinal number one for the below knee men's at the Blackmore's Australian Pro Adaptive Surfing Championships, the first leg of the Visit Oceanside Adaptive Surfing Professional World Championship Tour crazy conditions the last few days benoit yesterday couldn't have been more pristine and perfect now you're calling me benoit you mono Benway, stuart. Benway, i'm sorry man <laughs> mono, Sto mono stewart introduced me half to half as half of well, byron as benoit i know your name man i know you for years man i just uh i just got caught up in the aussie thing man for a minute sorry bro <laughs> could be called worse things <laughs> i'm telling you <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kenji, though, taking a look. He's been keeping busy. First couple waves, he, um, uh, first wave didn't lock in very well. Second one, he did get a good ride, get a 3.47. Last, 0 0.50, did not factor in, and there he is taking a look again. Keeping pretty busy, um, feeling a little bit of urgency as he's seen uh, white and yellow lock onto some pretty good set waves. Here he just knows they're out there. Blue up and riding. Call it, Ben. Andrew Golick. Gets off that one, off the bottom, and gets just hung up in that that uh, wind. And we uh, 
we shared a table last night, had a couple beers with Mo Johnson and the crew, and uh, had some great stories about George Greeno and, and all about boards and fins and everything else. And, and uh, it was pretty exciting to share my morning talking to Bob McTavish. Nice. And him and uh, Greeno basically are some of the main people to thank that we took these big, long, clunky boards in the, in the past, shortened up the length, and uh, created all these new lines and S-turns and freedom on the face for more dynamic surfing that has bled all the way into what we're dealing with these days. Jeez, probably spilled over to all these adaptive boards we're making now, too. And it looks like Kinjiro turning around to paddle into this one. If he gets it, it might be a really good one for him. But he chooses to cut out. Blue's and last is a 1.73. Blue, you have a 1.73 and a 0 0.83. Change in priority. Kinjiro paddled for that one, so showed first intent. First priority now goes to yellow. Second priority goes to blue. Priority changed. First priority yellow. Second priority blue. Now third priority goes to red. Time call 13 minutes. And if you are showing intent, paddling with intent, you will lose your priority. And Kinjiro right there, paddling with intent, gives up his first priority as he sits on the peak to yellow. Forrest Weinberg, who's down the beach down here somewhere, caught a little wave, got maybe got swept down the beach a little bit. It looks like Kinji and Andrew Gallick, Gallick are just kind of sitting on the peak, waiting for, uh, waiting for uh, some waves to come through. And we have more Anzac biscuits down here. My favorite snack that keeps us charged up throughout the day. Uh, I don't know what that is. It's a biscuit that looks like a cookie. Kinjiro taking off, going right. Camera not staying with it. Kinji challenging the top of that one. Staying with it in the pocket, down the line. Nice check turn right there, Ben. Staying in the section. He's going to get, I'll try to put an exclamation point on this right here. Snap, and he does it. A nice little exclamation point. That is going to pull Kinjiro up into the score line and challenge some of these top scores and maybe move him into second place. He only needed a 2.17. Yeah. That's definitely going to do that. I get a good uh, good feeling that uh, Yellow's going to drop the third. We will find out once we get that score in. But uh, that's the one that you could tell Kenjiro's uh, waiting for. Real smooth and calm body body movement. No claims on that one, but I could just sense a little bit of confidence as he kicked out of it with control. Kenji throwing up some top scores in the previous, in the round robin scores. He put up a 7.50, had a throwaway of a 7.1 and a 9.0. So we know that Kenji. First priority blue, second priority white, third priority is with red. As we're going to have some more scores, we just saw a ride for white. Let's get to the. We just cut up on the end of that one, and it looked like we had a free surfer spinning on by. Hey, we don't know if if, if Massa made it into the finals, so uh, that was my bad for saying that. I didn't know it was the, the second. So ten minutes and forty-five seconds. We've got some scores to come in. Kenji Ito's last wave, seven point eight three, moves him into the lead position. Red's last, seven point eight three. Change in situation. Red's now in the lead with a seven point eight three, and now a three seven point eight three and three point four seven. Red in the lead. Jake Matthews in second. Last wave is a two point one zero. White is second with a 4.50 and a 2.93. Yellow, third with a 4.0 and a 2.17, needing 3.44 to move back up into second place. And blue, Andrew Gallick has a 1.73 and a 0 0.83, needing 5.7 to go to second. Now 10 minutes, first priority blue, second priority white. Kinjiro dropping the 7.83, almost going excellent on that one. Kinji throw, constantly co throwing up the high sevens into the eights and the nines all through the contest. Every single round that he's been in, he's thrown something nice up in there. So uh, Kinji really wanted to challenge for this world championship. He was in the race last year. And we have Blue up and riding, up and down through the back of that one. Blue will give away his priority on that, it looks like. Kinji, super stoked. If you ever know Kinji, if you ever get a chance to meet him, the guy never stops smiling. Always happy, always stoked. 
Uh, we love Kenjiro. Uh, he's been traveling the tour. He's been putting in the time, going to Hawaii, doing all the events. I think he missed Costa Rica last year, and that was the one thing that kind of stopped him from being able to claim that title. Time call, nine minutes. Once again, Red in the lead, his last wave, 7.83. And Red also has a 3.47 in first place. Second, White. White's got a 4.50 and a 2.93. Yellow in third with a 4.0 and a 2.17. Looking for a 3.44 to move to second. And Andrew Garlic has a 1.73 and a 0.83. Needing 5.7, eight and a half minutes. When she does that interview, when is she starting that interview? Are they doing it now? So eight minutes and 10 seconds, as we are saying, Kenjiro Ito got carted back up to the top of the point. And now Red, Kenjiro Ito for Japan, gets the largest score of that heat and pops himself up to the lead. And Forrest Weinberg, yellow, dropped to third, now needing a 3.44, and fourth blue needing a 5.7. We're seeing the conditions get a little bit more groomed. We had some really, really strong offshore gusts making it pretty difficult for a bit there, but it's actually kind of softening things up. Still, I'm not sure what our uh, midday low tide is, but it does seem like it hasn't dropped too much. And we know that after the low tide, as it starts to bleed back in, we've seen some very, very uh, increased conditions in our previous days of the competition. So if we get that little extra energy pushing in against that offshore, we could have a, even more frequent sets, better waves with more push. And we've got this beautiful offshore just holding things in place and keeping it clean. Seven minutes and 10 seconds remaining. Always, thanks, Ben. <laughs> and so we, uh, we're now in our stand to below knee. We did have, uh, we had about a, a four hour delay in the morning and getting started as we had a huge uh, rainstorm. I know, that's what my mom says. Six minutes and 40 seconds. So yeah, we had to wait for that morning rain. Also, the winds have come down. If you can imagine what you're looking at now here live. Andrew Gallick, nice drop on this one. A lot of speed off the takeoff. High lines it. Gets up into that lip line, but the higher you get up on the face, the more susceptible you are to that wind blowing you out the back. And that's what happened. You could see the disappointment on Andrew's face a little bit that he didn't give it a little bit more uh, lower body movement and kind of lower his center of gravity to kind of keep him in that. Uh, you could kind of see the disappointment that he knew he had an opportunity to put an exclamation point on that. And that, you know, with the exclamation points at the end, it really makes a huge difference when you can get that real good snap at the end or that real good finishing maneuver at the end. It really offers the opportunity for you to move up in the score line. Yeah, and what Chaka means to you, uh, new viewers to competition, the exclamation point just means doing a solid ending maneuver and riding out, showing, showing the judges that you rode out with control and also uh, one maneuver will not get judged as high as a combination of two or three normally unless it's something that's just so mind-blowing and extreme and done in a critical si uh, part of the wave which right now the critical part of wave is that lip line and the higher up you get on the face the more likely you're going to go over the back so these guys need to really kind of navigate on that lower four-fifths of the face and Forest. not get too high up just giving away his priority right there Priority change, first priority white, second priority blue, and third priority now with yellow. We have five minutes remaining. So you can see when, you know, like Kinji did earlier and like Forrest just did right now, paddling with that intent, it just, even if nobody's around, it just, it, it's, it's a real uh, strategy buster, you know what I mean? Because if you have first priority, you know, uh, Force could have just paddled right up here and challenged and sat right on those two other surfers and just waited for the best set to come and he could establish dominant 
uh, position. You know, and he's down the beach a little ways, not in a real challenging spot where he's going to challenge for a dominant position, but he just hands the priority away. So these are strategic things that you can do when you do have priority to exercise more dominant position. And uh, we've seen that kind of play part. Kinji handed it away earlier in the heat and Forrest handed it away right now. Priority change. Now second priority will go to yellow. Third priority will go to red. Yeah, blue had a paddle there. So once again, priority bouncing around. But one thing in their favor is it is not easy to get into these waves when you have all that wind in your face pushing you out the back. And then in Forrest's favor, it's not easy to paddle back up against the current to block these no, dudes either. No, it's so, not. Yeah, you it's, can see it's, he's, he's in the same position, but now he's about... Uh, 20 yards farther down the beach. As Priority just... hasn't come to play too much, except we did see that little mix-up with Red Dog being a little bit too close. But we haven't had the... Uh, everyone's kind of been taking their turns down the point, and we don't even get the, the competitors close enough to really use those blocks and use that priority strategy because that sweep is just so darn strong. Right. And, it, you know, it's unfortunate that uh, we had that priority interference with Red Dog back there, but that is actually three minutes. the very first infraction of the event. Last of blue, 2.37. First red, second white, third yellow needing 3.44, and fourth blue needing 5.06. Three minutes. Priority with white, second priority first yellow. Priority white, second priority yellow, third priority with red, and now fourth priority goes to blue. And we've got just about 2.40 on the clock here. And it looks like Kinjiro in the first semifinal for this event went from being in last place with his first wave score of a 0 0.73 and uh, kind of a real slow start for Kinji, put a 3.47 on the board and then followed that up with just a, a 0 0.50. Caught that one really nice right and he just looked so comfortable on it. And it looks like Forrest taking off on a closeout. Just giving that the go. Forrest only needs a 3.44 with two minutes left. Uh, that's not going to be on offer with that up and down. He's feeling the pressure right now. The current world champ feeling the pressure about to get uh, knocked out in the semifinals. First priority white, second priority red, third priority blue, and fourth priority now with yellow, two minutes. Yeah, one thing I wanted to point out is we saw Forrest pop up and the... Uh, the contrast between Kenjido, Forrest, and um, uh, Andrew is you have front leg and back leg amputees. And Andrew Gottlich's got the biggest job ahead of him getting up to his feet as he's got the front leg. And he's got to create more clearance, can't really pull those feet and those ankles up and out of the way as he's getting up on the board as uh, Forrest and Kenjido have that front leg where they can really pull it up into their chest and get up early Kenji. as we see Kenjido <laughs> pulling in. He says, I want it, man, I want it. Now we see White up and riding. Oh, oh, no, that. Jake Matthews throwing okay. up a nice little snap. Nice snap under the lip. I was thinking that was a non-competitor for a second. I had to check the jersey. Time call, one minute. We'll have some more scores to be worked out. Blue has first priority. So. Yeah, so we've seen some amazing surfing going on. I really like that snap by Jack, Jake on that last one. Time call, 45 seconds. First priority blue, second priority yellow. Yeah, uh, just talking about Kinji and how he just, no pressure on him. And here comes yellow, Forrest. Weinberg, the current champ, feeling the pressure. Time call. Bam, seconds. getting up, and he pulls the snap, and he clutches it. He's so happy right there. You can see he only needs First a 3.44 to move into second place and to advance. I think he might get that. He was feeling the pressure. The current world champ getting down the line with an exclamation point in the Time fading minutes, seconds. fading seconds of the heat. Ready to count it down in five, four, three. Two, one. So that wasn't the replay of the of the snap that Forrest got. We're still waiting on the score for Forrest here. Up, oh, they're not going to give it to us, but we need to see that second score. It has to be uh, more than a 3.44. It was a great little wave. I'm thinking mid four sections, but it it definitely should uh, get him up there. And there it is. Oh, Forrest doesn't 
No, because I make it because Jake, Jake caught Matthews another already, wave. He yeah. caught that other snap. So that wasn't necessarily his requirement because we still had some scores we were chewing on. It wasn't. Jake pulls a six with that beautiful snap, and Forrest Weinberg that would have if Jake didn't get that Next six on the snap. By. We're starting you guys up in five, four, three, two, one. Forrest <laughs> would have met that. 3-4-4 four, four with the 4 six, oh. but Jake Matthews with that one big snap gets the 6-0, oh. and it will be Kinjiro and Jake Matthews that move into the finals of the below knee stand division here at the Australia Pro brought to you by Blackmores. This was a really nail biter towards the end. Forrest Weinberg really thought he had it, but he did not see Jake Matthews out the back with that big snap. So that was a well-chosen wave. He had a lot of speed, and he really got up into that critical section with a solid controlled snap. And so, um, yeah, I definitely give a nod to the judges. 6.0 for that one solid turn, but that's uh, what I was mentioning earlier. Is it's not always a combination of a bunch of small turns. Sometimes if it's got some wow factor to it and you got a little... Uh, a little extra pizzazz in that critical section. They're going to reward you even for one single single maneuver. It was in a very critical part of the wave. He went really, he didn't go quite vertical, but he did really go up to the top, challenge it. The bottom of that wave dropped out, and he just kind of stayed with it and rode out of it really nice. So congrats to him. I'm not letting us live in the past any longer. We got a new heat in the water, brother. So we're now in our stand two below knee out in the water. We have Peg Leg. That's his legal name. He changed it to Peg Leg. Peg Leg Bennett, Chrono UK in red. Dale Taylor from Australia in white. Paul Lee in yellow for Australia, and Sean Bigfoot Lewis for Hawaii in blue. And there you have on your screen, Kenjiro Ito. Yellow it's up and riding. Paul Lee. Paul Lee on his custom prosthetic. It's got a flip-flop on the bottom of it, and it's got <laughs> fake blood on it. Oh, my goodness. But I he's a that. ripping surfer. Surfs down at Kira, I guess, a bunch. And... Uh, Guy's in gnarly shape. I surfed uh, a couple of the free surfs with him and oh. saw him pull in backside. And uh, some of our previous days, when we first got here pre-competition, it was pumping and bowling off the midsection of this beach. So uh, just a little, a little story about Paul Lee, uh, 63 years old. He helped me out the back here to get lifted off the buggy. And that guy is so yoked for 63. The guy's, he's just huge. His back man. is w as wide as we are tall. Yeah, he is definitely in shape for 63. All right, yellow's first wave, 2.50. White's got a first score of a 1.67. Time call, 22 minutes and 15 seconds. So the top two out of this Heat will move on to the final to join Kinjiro and Jake Matthews. And I want to just congratulate all these guys for making the semifinals. Sean Bigfoot Lewis making his first semifinal in quite a while. He was ranked fifth on the AASP World Tour in 2023. Been putting in a lot of work. He's here representing the High Fives Foundation. We want to throw a huge shout out to Bigfoot. He's been putting in a lot of work. He is the Hawaii Adaptive Surfing Champion, or excuse me, Hawaii uh, HSA champion in his division. White up and riding down the line. Dale Taylor getting a nice little snap. Almost wanted to race it around that section. But the HSA, Hawaii Surfing Association, Bigfoot, is the champion of that division. Yellow up and riding. Paulie keeping it low. And so we're starting to see these things. I think the tide actually did drain out that much more because we're seeing these sections that were holding up earlier now just kind of zip and kind of run on these guys. So wave selection is going to come into key a little bit more as blue. Bigfoot's going to use the whitewash to roll into this one. Let's see that foot. There we go. And it's digging that outside rail. Digs in that outside there, rail. Inside but rail, you know what? Me. Those uh, And here we go. Peg leg. Live action. Draws it back. Better wave selection. See how he shuffles up to the front. Keeps that nose fighting down the face against that wind. Shuffles back uh -oh. again. Can't quite stay with it. And so he comes from usually riding a mini mal, something up in the eight foot range where he's got a lot more um, a lot more movement on the deck to need to go push that nose down, mm -hmm. move back. And now he's on a 610 this time, dropping down in, uh, substantially, but he's still got that little movement and that freedom of his feet. 
This is the for Bigfoot trying to get up on that one. Took off a little late. This is the first time I have seen uh, Peg Leg ride a pointy nose board. He's usually riding a round nose long board. Um, he, he's a big wave surfer. He's been to Portugal quite a few times. He, uh, you know, prides himself on being able to ride the big waves in those tough conditions. But, uh, yeah, this is the first time I've really seen him ride this type of board in the last few years. And it served him well, man. He's caught some really good sections. And uh, in the previous heats, he's put up some really nice scores. And we'll see what that score offers him here, see if we can get him up into uh, the score line here with that first ride. And we're waiting on a score from Bigfoot, and we're waiting on to a score from... First priority white, second... From Peg Lake. Second priority yellow, 19 minutes and 30 seconds, waiting on scores. Yeah, one thing with uh, uh, peg leg is uh, on some of those earlier days where the bottom was really dropping out, it's literally impossible to take off and get nine feet of rail or however long on a, a mini log to try and scoop up under and hook under the lip. So the six, 610 that he's on, this yellow board, is allowing him to get up and under and really do that little quick pivot to sneak in into these waves. There's no no long face to give you time to get to your feet. Right, and also that shape that he's using is is really uh, affording him to get down the line faster as well. Definitely. Red, first wave, 3.33. Dale Taylor's in the lead with a 2.83 and a 1.67. Paul Lee, you're in second with a 2.50 and a 1.57. Peg leg, red, you've got a 3.33. You're in third place, needing 0 0.74. And Sean Lewis, Bigfoot, 0 0.90, needing 3.17. 18 and a half minutes, first priority white, second priority yellow. Want to throw a huge shout out to our guy, Trevor Kennison. I'm not sure if you guys have Netflix. If you do, go check out Full Circle the movie the, about Trevor Kinnison. He's our guy from High Fives Foundation, the first paraplegic to ever do a double backflip on a mono ski. It's an incredible film. It's not just about uh, Trevor, it's about his story, and it also ties in uh, the story of, uh, of uh, Barry Corbett and uh, Corbett's pass up there in Jackson Hole and it's it's just an incredible story so if you guys get a chance go on to netflix check out our guy trevor kinnison his movie full circle and uh, trevor has done a few of the tour events uh this year he is concentrating on skiing so we don't blame him he is a ripping skier and he has made a career out of ski jumping adaptive ski jumping so some people were like you can't make a living doing that and trev says watch me i'll go out and do a double backflip yellow up and riding watching paul lee navigate across this section uh, and you can see he just wanted to reposition and be able to get up on top of that lip but uh yeah the, the conditions are getting very tricky in this heat it seems like that t tide is drained out the offshore is beating the amount of water that we have underneath these waves, and the sex injuries is coming down all at once. Yeah, it's the conditions are pretty tough right now, even though uh, the wind in some of these waves look super pristine. Uh, it is very shifty right now. The tide is low. You can see all that jumble on the inside. It really, it really makes things difficult. It also makes things difficult to read. It looks like things are picking up, then it dies down. It looks like it's going to hit a shallow spot, then it hits a deep hole. So you start scratching and you think you're going to get into one, and then poof, it, it, it dies out. But when you do find one, you can really get those good sections. It does offer, uh, you know, the hollow section and and those really good fast sections that you can challenge the top of the wave. Last of yellow, 1.93. Yellow stays in second with a 2.50 and a 1.93. Red is in third with a 3.33, needing 1.1. And now blue in fourth with a 0 0.90, needing 3.53. White up and riding Dale Taylor. 
pump in and just gets that nice little end snap with a little baby exclamation point because, you know, he didn't have much room to work with. So it was just two moves right there. It was like a little pump, check, snap, and and then that nice little turn right there. But he should get rewarded for that. I think that will I outdo. think it was a bigger turn than we thought. There We're going to we see go. the replay. It's a 5.0 right no, there. No, let's, let's stick, take a better look at this, man, because he was up under that lip. And here he is taking off. I love his, his body positioning and his mm. style and really gets up under that little difficult position, a little bit of risk involved, as well as using that critical section. So he was rewarded a 5.0. He's going to be happy to hear about that, although he was already sitting in the lead, I believe. So we have these Aussies that are coming out of nowhere, Dale Taylor, Paul Lee, that White's are leading this heat. White's last wave, 5.0. You stay in the lead with a 5.0 and a 2.83. Paul Lee still in second, red in third, needing a 1.1. And now fourth blue needs a 3.53. 15 minutes. So advancement in this heat is anybody's game right now. Uh, to advance, Bigfoot only needs uh, less than a four, three and a half, a little more than a three and a half. Peg leg needs to basically stand up and fall down, and he can jump into second place. We still got a lot of time left in this heat, but it's anybody's ball game right now. Uh, combined top score is a 7.83. We have seen a 7.83 on one wave today in some of these previous heats. So anybody can anybody can jump from fourth to first with one wave if they catch the right wave. And here we got a couple of guys coming up the beach. Bigfoot pumping everybody up. Sean Lewis from Lahaina, Hawaii. Sean Lewis, a little story about Shawnee boy there. He, uh, you know, was in the Lahaina fires. He chose to run in and help some people out and suffered some burns and you know, really saw some things that uh, that really disturbed him for a while. Lahaina is very close to his heart. Him and Aaron Polk, always uh, thinking of the people of Lahaina, always trying to rebuild that. So we want to just throw out a big shout out to Bigfoot. We love you, buddy. And uh, yeah, we uh, we are always praying for Lahaina and and all the people there. And we want uh, that place to get rebuilt. And we want the love and the aloha to come back to Lahaina. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of family there, the Costantinos that we have out there, Augie and his family and little Angelo Jr. or uh, young Angelo and his uncle Angelo Costantino up there in, in Lahaina and uh, all the family out there. We, uh, we really appreciate you guys. We love you guys and we're praying for you always. Well, look at these. Paul Lee is getting motored on up. Score for Paul. Yellow, once again, last wave was a 1.93. You're still in second with a 2.50 and a 1.93. Red's the third with a 3.33, and fourth blue is a 0 0.90, needing 3.53. So now we, I think we have a majority of our riders trying to make it back up to the top of the point. And the priority panel is clear at the moment. So priority not established. Whoever makes it out to the lineup first will get that first priority. Although with this sweep and the, all these different options of takeoff zones out here, uh, we haven't seen priority used too much. But it's always an extra little tool to have in your bucket, especially in the dying seconds of the heat. Yep. If you can establish dominant position on the heat or on the peak and... Uh, push somebody out of position or even if they are already on the wave and you have priority and you jump the shoulder that person has to give way to you and you can stop their score and you can start your score and it looks like red peg leg might spin around it looks like you might be taking a look at this one yeah and then when uh, um in elimination situation where third and fourth will drop out second can always use that priority to keep third and fourth out of his space yep. and m ensure that he does make it through. So that's when it's really, <laughs> there we go, Kenjiro. Kenji so stoked, bro. He made the final look at how happy Kenjiro is. He's been throwing up big, excellent scores the entire event, starting his first heat with a 7.50 and a 9-0. Time call, 11 and a half minutes. And finishing first priority. with a 7.83, an exclamation point to say, I want to make it to the final. And uh, Kinji's going to be a real factor in the below knee uh, division all season long. I know that this guy, I watch him surf Oceanside, watch him surf Hawaii. And uh, this guy's a serious contender for this title. And uh, with Forrest knocked out in that last heat, 
it opens up the door for somebody else to come in and claim uh, the first place on this tour and to be ranked number one after the first stop. Yeah, but they still got a, They got three more stops to go to. That's it. But you know, it's when you good, can build that momentum, up. yeah, when you can build that momentum and win that first one, or if you can at least make the finals and get ranked up in there, and make that finals, you know, it really makes a big difference mentally. You know, for somebody to to say, you know what? I mean, even for me, just to squeak into the semifinals, you know, for this event uh, has been very important. You know, I uh, unfortunately had surgery in September. I was out for eight months, and it's been a long recovery. So for me, I'm just stoked to make the semis, you know. And, and uh, it, so imagine how these guys are feeling that, that they've made the finals now. And, and Kinji got real close last year. I know that the taste of that, he's tasted victory at the U.S. Open. He's cashed those checks. He knows what it's like to be at the top of the podium. And all of these guys in this race for the below knee championship are going to give it their all. And we got a couple new guys like, you know, Dale Taylor and Paul Lee. These guys look like serious contenders. They're not, you know, they're paddling out in this, this gnarly conditions. They're giving it all they can. And uh, they're putting everybody else on notice and saying, hey, man, we want a piece of the pie, too. Yeah, and you, you never want any of these divisions to get too comfortable. We're always going to have some new faces coming in, and you never want to get complacent either thinking that you've got it made because there's always someone who's hungrier than you that's going to come nibbling up, and that pushes the whole field up, which is exactly what we need. And uh, more and more as here yes. we go, peg leg, using the, the top of this uh, whitewash. Looks almost like a double, oh, triple up nice. riding that uh -oh. top. He's moving it up, trying to keep low. He's actually, He's gonna catch I it. think he could almost get over that bump, oh, but he gets man. pushed out, and that deep water pool and the offshore energy just pushes him on out. But uh, if there was any way to make it over that section, it was definitely shuffling up the nose, pushing that so nose down. That's the way I, I, his style of surfing is kind of like a longboard style where he does do a lot of shuffling and moving up and down the board. He does that more so than anybody else in this division. And it looks like he's going to spin around and just try to catch this other one right here. Might as well. Hey, he's the only one out drop there. Dropping oh, drop it deep on that one. Not quite working out. But he loves to do that shuffle up and down the board for speed control. And that's something that he does more so than anybody else in this division. Yeah, and that's one thing that the um, it's, it's not as functional on a shorter board. But as you get into longer equipment, um, moving up to the nose, Pushes the nose down, flat, it doesn't flatten the rocker, but it, it keeps that uh, nose nice and low. Also keeps wind from getting up under the nose. And then also the lower you get and the farther up you are, the more you're going to keep that energy going. You lower that center of gravity, keep that flow going. And uh, the front half of the board is usually the thicker half of the board. Yeah. And it, the more back you are over that thin part of the board, the more you're putting on the brakes when you're needing to accelerate. Right. And he only needs a 1.1 to move up into second place for possible advancement. I know he's going to get that on that wave, uh, on that previous wave, that down the line little jumper that he had. That's That's got to offer more than a 1.1 for sure. First priority yellow, second priority white, and third priority is with red. And we're still waiting on his score for red to see. And there it is there. It's a 2.87. Peg leg does jump into second place with a 6.20 combined score. Last of red, change in situation. Last of red, 2.87. Red goes to second. Yellow, you've dropped to third, needing a 3.7. And fourth blue now needs a 5.3. Seven minutes remaining. Once again, first white, second red. Third yellow needs a 3.7, and fourth blue needs a 5.3. Seven minutes. So, First yeah. priority yellow, second priority red. Peg leg just saying, you know what? I gave up my title to go do Survivor UK in 2023, and he wants to reclaim that, man. And, and uh, he is going to be a factor in every single contest here. He is the old guard. And we have the new guard and the old guard, and these guys are battling it out for this division. It's going to be very interesting with 620 left in the heat. It's ticking down. Peg's kind of positioned himself. All he needs is a 4.5 to move into first place. But it is still anybody's game. Even Sean Lewis, uh, Bigfoot down here on the bottom in fourth place with a combined score of a 1.80. All he needs is a 5.3. And he can move jump right up into first place. 
uh, or excuse me, to advance in a fight with a 5.3 into second place. So it's not out of the realm that everybody can. Uh, this is still anybody's game, man. Nobody's safe in this heat. It's a like six months. We saw yellow take a look there. And yellow probably will lose first priority and just like that, boof. Priority change, first priority goes to red. And it looks Second like. Second priority goes to yellow. Sean Lewis coming up out of the Third water. With, white. with five minutes and 30 seconds left. It looks like Bigfoot's calling it a day. I don't know if it's out of frustration. I don't know if the conditions are just a little bit too hairy for him or what's going on, but. Bigfoot comes out with five minutes left, and he all he needed was a 5.3 to advance. So I'm going to have to get a little interview with him later and see what prompted him to come out of the water. Didn't look like he was limping. I just think maybe it was a little bit of frustration possibly, but, uh, you know, we never like to see somebody with five minutes come out of the water unless they're injured. Yellow's third wave came in as a 0 0.50 that didn't factor into his top two. Yellow's still in second. I'm sorry, red, last wave, 0 0.50, red, still in second, yellow's in third, needing a 3.7, Paul Lee now has a 2.50 and a 1.93, needing 3.7, and blue, needing 5.3, 4 minutes and 30 seconds. So four and a half minutes remaining, and we've got yellow. Been take, staying out there in position, taking a look, giving a test on a couple. First Friday red, second Friday yellow, third Friday is with white. We've got four minutes. And we had Paul Lee up on another one. That would be his fourth wave. We'll have another score for him as peg leg. Picking off a good one here. Not as much of a, a section to deal with. Well, right when I said that, there's that section. But he's screaming along the line. Had a good trim on that one. Um, not a lot of room for maneuvers. But he's in second place already. 3.33, 2.87. Already sitting in an advancing position. And uh, just trying to kind of... Um, strengthen his, strengthen solidify his that, that, that second spot. That advancing position. If things are getting a little bit brighter, it looks like the sun might warm some things up here in a second. Yep. I Bang. don't know how many heats we got left. One or two. Uh, got Not enough, because I'd like to watch this till the <laughs> evening. So I got a chance to talk to Bigfoot right there. Uh, earlier in the in the week, Bigfoot did have a heat stroke type Time situation, ball, dehydration. Minutes. And, First party uh, white, second party yellow. He did end up in the hospital for an IV, did get some magnesium. Um, and uh, he just explained to me, you know what, Chuck, I'm, I'm, I'm literally exhausted. And it's really good when people know their limitations in these tough, strange conditions with these hard winds. Uh, it looks like Biggie's trying to walk back out there and say, you know what, I still got five minutes left. I'm not giving up. Uh, it's two minutes, 40 seconds left, and Biggie's walking back out in the water right there. Uh, yellow trying to get on this on his belly, not doing it. Uh, yeah, the bottom is really dropping out now, and it's it looks like it, the, the tide has bottomed out even more. When I thought it was low earlier, it's lower now. Looks like changing situation. Paul Lee caught a wave and knocked uh, peg leg down to third with a 3.87. All's peg leg needs is a 3.05. All right, so we have the last of yellow, 3.87. Last of red was a 2.33. Yellow, your last wave, 3.87. You've moved to second, change in situation. First white, second yellow. Third red needs a 3.05, and fourth blue needs a 5.47. We're down to two minutes. So once again, reminder of scores. White in the lead with a 5.0 and a 2.83. Yellow, Paul Lee in second with a 3.87 and a 3. I'm sorry, 3.87 and a 2.50. Peg leg scores are 3.33 and 2.87. He's in third, needing 3.05. And Sean Lewis had two scores of a 0 0.90. Down to one minute and 30 seconds. First priority white, second priority yellow. Yeah, so Bigfoot just chose to paddle back out there and just wants to finish the heat in the water. He was exhausted and had suffered a little bit of heat stroke earlier in the week, so... 
We just want to congratulate Bigfoot for making the semifinals, for having the heart and the courage to paddle out in these conditions and give it his all, everything that he had, he left it out there in the water. We do like for when people meet their limitations that they don't exceed them and that they say, hey, you know Time what? Call one minute. Time to pull myself out. Yeah, and it's it, it really is exhausting out there. You've got so much current. You've got so much water moving around. It's a new spot. You're not used to it, and uh, the water moves in w weird ways. The waves are really unpredictable if, you, if you're not from here. And uh, as perfect as it looks, it's still quite tricky out there. Sure, and I can tell uh, Biggie's a big dude, man. Remaining. And uh, to have a guy like that really huffing and puffing and, and breathing really hard, you know that he gave it his all. And, uh, and the I other thing is it's just nonstop out there. Yeah. There hasn't been one lull the whole morning. No, it's been a machine today. 15 seconds remaining. 10 seconds. Tension riders counting down. Five, four, three, one. There it is. Heat number, semifinal heat number two. Dale Taylor and Paul Lee will advance to the finals with Kinjiro and Jake Matthews in this division, knocking out two of the favorites in those two heats with the current world champion Forrest Weinberg dropping out in the first semifinal and previous champion Peg Leg Bennett dropping out in the second semifinal and we got some new blood baby it's here the new blood has moved into the final yeah I'm just keeping my eyes on head jab zippy because we get carried away and we forget to start the next heat often in this little booth here. And that happened to me when you were gone. So, <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, we don't have 20 people in between us and the judges as we did earlier. Yeah. And uh, what, do you know what heat we got next? I'm a little mixed up on here. Is it I'm super assist? mixed up as well. We're all going to be mixed up because it's all shuffled and rearranged uh, from the original schedule. So as soon as we start it, they start it, and then we'll get our little live box so we know where we're at. Cause there we go. I don't know. I don't, I'd love to say what's coming up if I knew. I, I, well, I'm just happy it's not me coming up. <laughs> hey, Zippy. Uh. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm just yelling into the air while my, my microphone is on. No, I'm just making sure we don't need to start up our next heat. That was the last heat. Is that the last heat? Yeah, that's the last heat. Are you kidding me? All right. That's that was it? the last heat of the day. What a tease. Ten way. What a tease. That is, I'm, I'm we not going just, home. We were just I'm going to tell Paul Lee up. to paddle back out there and give us a show. We I'm not were, going home yet. We were just getting warmed up, man. And we just want to congratulate all the people you that gotta made. you got to be kidding me. You no, know, all the guys that made the finals. That's all we get to chew on till tomorrow? That's it, man. So we had some upsets, some upsets in the semifinals as we see the current world champ. Forrest Weinberg drop out in the semifinal number one. We see previous world champ Peg Leg drop out in semi number two. We see some new blood popping up in semi number two. And it's going to be a very exciting final tomorrow. We will have the Wave Ski semifinals tomorrow, first thing in the morning at 8 o'clock. And uh, me and Ben Way, man, we're uh, super bummed that we were just getting warmed up. But we're going to have some fresh faces in the in the booth tomorrow. You're I gonna... swear we'll do better earlier tomorrow. <laughs> You're going to have Richard Julian joining you tomorrow for the Wave Ski men's heats, the semifinals, both of those, and the women's Wave Ski heat. So Richie will be in here gracing you with his uh, knowledge and his uh, presence for those three heats. And uh, then I hear there's gonna be some other names coming up in here too. Well, you know what? If you guys are uh, out and around the area tonight, there's the archive film night at Stonewood Brewery across from the McTavish factory. We're gonna have Randy Rarick, uh, the founder of the Triple Crown. And we're gonna have Bob McTavish talking with a live band playing a soundtrack over archive uh, footage. So that's gonna be a super fun one. And we love those Stonewood uh, ales so i'll see you at the brewery tonight it's gonna be a lot of fun well you might not see me brew at the brewery because i gotta surf at 8 30 in the morning come so. on brew brewery <laughs> okay well Chuck it doesn't drink but uh, i'll come out and say hi to everybody and we want to thank you guys for tuning in for day four of the Blackmore's Australian Pro Adaptive Surfing Championships, the first leg of the Visit Oceanside Adaptive Surfing Professional World Championship Tour. We will tune in with you guys tomorrow, me and Ben Way.
Yep, tomorrow's finals day. You don't want to miss it. And I hear the sun's going to be out and the waves are going to be just as pumping. Conditions are going to clean up. I'm looking forward to it. Ben Way, I love you, buddy. Love you Thank too, buddy. You, man. I'll see you out at the bars, baby. All right. See you guys tomorrow. You. Good health changes everything. So don't accept age as a limit or a bad night's sleep. Feel strong inside and out. Keep learning new moves. And if you want to stop, stop. Good health changes everything. Blackmores, 90 years of natural health expertise. For 60 years, PQSA and Home Care Plus have been there when it mattered. We're the experts in spinal cord injury and deliver quality, safe supports to people living with all disabilities with more than 5 million care hours provided in the last 10 years alone. We've grown into one of South Australia's largest and most trusted service providers, but we're not done yet. It's time for us to evolve. Join us on our journey as we unveil our new brand. Active Advice. It's the foundation on which Insurance Advisornet is built, and it has seen us become one of Australia's leading general insurance broker networks by providing sound, active advice, personalised service, and the right solutions for every client. It's a responsibility we've never lost sight of, and we never will. For your local advisor, search Insurance Advisornet today. Adversity to adventure, challenges to opportunities. We ride the ripples, get stoked from the ocean. Building resilience, creating empowerment for all those who ride our wave. Come join us for your hit of ocean therapy. Last week, Maddie and Tom had some tough decisions to make. Right now, it's whether to surf the left or the right. Back home, the Wilsons always use proper dinner etiquette. Out here, the stick will do just fine. I found the need that when I was moving house, um, I couldn't find anywhere to go and didn't have any options in terms of accessible homes or um, just a place that was going to be suitable. So I, um, I discovered the SDA, which is part of the National Disability Insurance Scheme, and my experience led to me to setting up Accessible Homes Australia. Yeah, so I've always been reliant on family to provide my housing needs, and now. National Dis Disability Insurance Scheme has provided the Specialist Disability Accommodation Scheme, so I, I can, you know, go and live independently, which is ideal. Perry and I began looking around for what accommodation was available um, for him and his needs in the marketplace, and what we found was there really is a very, very limited um, range of options for him, and so we decided to go out and create some options and, and, and some accommodation purpose built to his needs. At the same time, we went through um, the process of registering him as a participant within the SDA. Perry had suggested that he would like to help some other people like him navigate the same process for themselves and form this company that we've formed, Accessible Homes Australia, to help them find suitable accommodation needs to suit. What better thing is there than being able to you know, look at a list of properties and have a choice.